it was really good gameplay from Lucifron. So I'm sure he's looking to come in and just repeat that. Um, but Beastie's going to be putting up quite a fight. Um, his his last series against B was extremely decisive. But equally, Lucifron against Marine Lord was pretty decisive. So let's dive in without further ado. My dude, oh, yeah. here we are. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped. Me too. Best of seven, my friend, to see who's going to make it to the Grand Finals and who's going to have to settle for third place. Maybe Beastie versus Lucifron. We open up. On an El Clasico, Dry Arabia, Beastie manning the refined and well-known Delhi, and Lucifron delving in the still not fully explored John Dark. Interesting to see, like, the wolf placement, the boar placement, if we could take a look at those at some point. The sheep scouting, obviously going to be critical. Beastie went for that deep dive with his scout, so you could saw, I think, of our, our lovely Observer Vodka was pointing that out. He did this, this far run across the map to try and make sure he scooped up these neutral sheeps. And it looks like he's got a little yep. lucky there and did find the three pack oh, right no. away. It's even worse than that. So this is kind of the coin flip. And this is what I think makes Delhi, Abbasids, maybe even Ibids eventually like really strong with this strategy. It's usually your timing. It's less of a coin flip against your opponent because unless you're against a Sif that can also do this, you know your opponent has to go drop off sheep. So maybe you don't get all the sheep because you overlap a little bit of where they scoured. But ultimately, worst case, you come out with the same number of sheep you would have went from a more defensive format. Instead, what just happened here is Beastie now has a rotation that can allow him to chomp up two thirds to three quarters of the sheep on the map. Yeah, and there's all these little details that make you think twice about things. Like the direction that Beastie was coming in right at the end there for Lucifron might make Lucifron think one way or the other about where he needs to go. And now you can see he's scouting this back corner, but that's where Beastie, Beastie did like this loop-de-loop. -loop. And I think Lucifron <laughs> caught the loop at just the wrong time to be under the impression that Beastie was now going this way and they both turned around. But that wasn't the case here for for Lu for Beastie. Beastie already kind of took these, which is really crazy. Well, let's see how his RNG is. There's probably two sheep in this corner, I imagine. So Lucifron at least gets a little bit out of this. Oh, my, it's a one -er. It's only one. Okay, there we go. There's the second. It didn't feel right for a moment there, but still, if we look at the sheep cam right now, I imagine it's going to be two thirds for Beastie. And it's probably going to finish up that way. With the way he's rotating now, Beastie should be going north shortly, and then he'll wrap back across towards his base and behind it, which will secure all the remaining sheep. So there you go. We've got 13 right now, and I think uh, Lucifron, what was that? Was that like six, maybe seven? Yeah, really not an ideal start, and it's it's always such, it's becoming, as you've mentioned it so many times, and as it's been so prominent and pertinent in the matches today, it's definitely something I'm going to be keeping more of an eye on in the future, is is the, the sheep sieves or like, sheep dependent sieves first, you know, not sheep independent sieves, but sieves that can handle less sheep, right? Um, especially with that early Dark Age build order, not needing that drop off. It's, it's such an interesting point, and I think... We'll have to see how much that affects these win rates between these sieves. Maybe Delhi just is a really good matchup against John because of this kind of thing. I think you're kind of alluding to that, right? Yes. It, it's like Delhi and Abbasids were two of the best performers before the expansion. And I think that's a very big part of why. So sounds like what we're hearing here is um, devs are taking note. We might be getting enough. We'll have to see. It's just, it, it is a strong play though, right? Like, because typically any other sieve can't make that play. Like French couldn't go onto the berries to start with here. Because if they did, they haven't got an improved gathering rate. They haven't increased the amount of food there. Both Delhi, Abbasids, and Ibids do. And then, of course, by extension, Japanese with a gathering rate with no research will barrow can also achieve a similar effect. Any other Civ, they go berries. They're accepting they're getting a worse feudal age timing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be important to see how Lucifron macros here because I think... With this matchup we saw earlier, and just with Jean Dark games in general, what we've seen a lot of players need to do with the Civ is in order to keep accruing advantage across the course of the game, if your opponent is playing passive, you need to find a way either to FC or to add a second TC. So I think it's going to be really important to look for that stone mine for Lucifron. Is he going to go out to it? We see Beastie going with the Ghazi Raiders. We talked about this a bit earlier. With the bonus versus heavy, it, it, it gives them a bit more freedom to be on the map against the Royal Knights. But you always have to keep in mind that John can heal them up later. So it's a bit of a risky play here for BC. Usually players who do this don't over-invest in Ghazi. We haven't seen like just like 20 or 30 Ghazi all at once without supporting army. So it's definitely going to be kind of an opener, probably followed up by our barracks or range pretty soon. Um, 
but we'll see how how like how much he commits to this. Could be BC has a different plan here. Two versus one. So the Ghazi could start winning this with good micro. It's just gonna be a bit annoying because if you don't kill this knight, then that's when divine restoration will eventually kick in. Yeah, but you Jean. can also heal with uh, scholars, right? Too, if you yeah. take the time to micro it. But I think is he walking Jean out in villager form, or is the UI just not updated? She's moving up to the ball right now. She's she's level okay, up. Okay, there we she go. Yeah, she hasn't got the XP. I love that Lucifer's already finding that. By the way, the optimization mm. around the move out times. It's kind of weird because you haven't got wheelbarrow, but he arrives at the perfect time. So he's min maxed, grabbing that ball, so he has no downtime at all. Yeah, that's going to be really huge. And with all the hunt on the left, if he starts going to the stone soon, we could see a, a TC on the left there, and it would secure and help him. Like, it would really help Lucifer to get a TC on the left somewhere. Uh, I think. Um, yeah. He is up against Rural Ghazi as well, so like it, it might be that he feels he can't rush a TC. He needs extra Not knights yet. right now, but yeah, like long term, I agree. Oh. Rax is going to be dropped. I like this. It's going to force Beastie to transition comp, which means that he might get that breathing room for the TC you were talking about. I don't know how I feel about that. So yeah, Knight Spear has been a composition against like the Horseman Spear that can work, um, but... BC didn't show the spears yet. He also didn't build a barracks yet, if I'm not mistaken. He's well, yeah, but you're building the spears it. against the Ghazi, right? And then, like, if the idea was to go for an extra TC, compared to just scaling knights, you're now saving resources for that TC play, surely. I guess, yeah, yeah. Maybe this works. Maybe this works better than I think. But I just feel like you're opening BC's hand to go Tower Victory Archers a lot. And that's what Delhi wants to do. But we'll see. Especially against Jean, right? Because like, the other yeah. thing as well is that usually you're ahead on Blacksmiths. I love the fact that Lucifer found a way into the Blacksmith so early, by the way, because that means if we do now see Archers, he has the quick transition into Undermesh, which is how Jean will be able to fight. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. This is really... This is a sticky point. Um, Beastie has committed a lot. He's already up to 10 of the, of the Ghazi oh. Raiders, right? Yeah, it's double blacksmiths as well. So he is pumping steel arrows. So there will be an archer transition, but I think he's waiting until his eco is big enough to flood it with like two archer ranges worth of support. Yeah, but he can't really fight into Jean until unless he gets a surround on Jean. Maybe with the bonus versus heavy, he can get the surrounding really quickly, snipe Jean out. You can pinch but her, yeah, because you've I got the like... extra twenty health. I think it is compared to mm -hmm. normal horsemen, so you don't die very fast. Ooh, just passing. Don't Nobody mind me. Say a word. Yeah, don't say a word. They did a quick high five there, if you didn't see it. As now the... Nice <laughs> the <coming> other <laughs> oh, man. Gets him. But there's no Spearman here and no Jean, so maybe the Ghazi could have stuck around. Maybe he's just going to take this engagement. Only two Spearmen there, but the heal is ready to go in a second, right? He's holding it. This is perfect, the way he's min-maxing, because the lower you get, the more value you get out of that pump heal. It's 30% of missing HP, and Beastie realizing a mistake's made here. Bad fight for him to take. I think he killed one Spearman, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe not enough here. Wow, we'll I actually, like, he was one Spearman. Uh, so the destroyed value, the interesting thing is, did, did Beastie consecrate the racks? Because he, the destroyed value for Beastie is 60 right now, right? Huh? Okay, no, interesting there, so. This front hasn't consecrated anything. Oh, huh. all right, we'll ignore that. Capturation, we know it leaves a little bit of spring cleaning, but that basically, he's killed one Spearman in this game. That is it, so not a great start. For beastie yeah no for sure it, it is actually quite weird it, it is actually quite weird that there's no consecration out that's that's a pretty big mistake from lucifer on here um gonna have to see if he resolves that soon uh, it is a global ability so there's really no reason not to just use it as soon as you have a charge um yeah that's that's interesting he did Unless, play really wait. well in that fight but did beastie go for a, no did lucifer go for a second scout then it must have been a second scout right Sorry, my, my brain is still locked on that destroyed value. Like, whatever it was, the, the point is it's still a good exchange. It's kind of interesting, actually. No, because scouts are 70 food. Let's just move on. The thing that is interesting is a rough indicator is you can use destroyed value to a certain extent to read how much Yon has reaped, right? So you understand how much he's accelerating on the XP chart. And this is a really good start for Lucifer. Yeah, it really is. Um, but we'll see. The deli, the deli timing hasn't hit quite yet. Once he has enough archers, like you're saying, I think he's double producing now. I think that was your call that he would do so. Um, if if he gets up to two ranges and he gets like a decent mess, then the spearman knight play might feel really bad. 
And then Lucifron's gonna have to, oh man. Tons of value. What? Two bills. Oh. Only one bill. Two of them got into there with no HP. That's incredible. Somehow, some way. And the army's now marching here. So BC, if he tries to break this, his face is gonna get broken in return. So we'll have to break away from there. Does at least take out one eco, as you are saying. Um, Lucifer from behind this has no move onto the stones. This is still just gonna remain a one TC play from him. Love that walling, by the way. Just creating that mm -hmm. nice little um, umbrella for the base if there's ever a Ghazi flood. Yeah, try to make it a little bit harder to deal damage to your base. It can definitely deter those like quick raids with just a few Ghazi. And so Beastie was obviously looking for that as he did get a Vil kill. Um, Bajan moving across the map now with her entourage of Spearmen and oh, the Ghazi just getting wow. taken out basically for free there from Beastie. A, a rare mistake there, but yeah, just not looking great. The destroyed value, you're right, man. Like This is this is looking I mean, dominant for Lucifron so far in these exchanges, but is Beastie's yes. position okay? I think so. Well, the, the, the good news for him is that Jean wasn't in range to soak XP there, so like, you know, that's not going to be an extra 30 XP for her at least, which is really important because actually these type of matchups, neck and neck like this, level 3 Jean will break it. If you're in Feudal still, you got a lot of Ghazi, sure you can get bonus damage up against Jon's champions, but Jon's champions are still going to trade really well courtesy of them essentially having Castle Age stats. So that's still a scary point in this game for BC to worry about. Even more scary, doesn't have any Sacred Sight still. He's just getting blocked out. Lucifer's just mirroring and move for move right now, which is what's making this game so worrisome. And now the wraparound with the Knights, the timing Ooh. by Lucifron. There's a reason this man has high ranking with the micro. You're starting to see it here. It's not just in the fights, it's in the map rotations. Yeah, and now there's enough archers here for Beastie. And he even added in a few spearmen, which I really like. Just a few for the brace even is going to be super valuable at keeping both his archers and the Ghazis alive against those night chargers. It's an important element here for Beastie to get the spears out. And now his army's pretty big. He's going to start capturing sacred sites, which is really good for him. His techs are almost done for Feudal Age. Like, he's probably a minute and a half away from all techs being done. But likewise is Lucifron. He's, he's almost done all of his techs as well. So, Lucifron able to keep up in all regards with Delhi so far. Keeping the Sacred Sites to just the first one now. Um, keeping the army count even. Until about now, right? This is this is a scary force for, Luci for Lucifron to deal with, right? Although he does yes. have a lot of knife. Like, if you look at the value. Lucifron, he never repaired the tower. He needs to get over his start. I think it's going to be too late. The villagers are going to be exposed. Good move by Beastie. Lucifron ends up losing, I think, one in the end. Or was that two? I think two. two. So two will shift away. A bit of a, a, a misplay there by Lucifron, not repairing it at all. Because if he had, he would have been able to buy enough time to engage this. It's like, nice. I'm going to commit to the charge. Archers, look at that sniper. I need to be careful. Jean can take a lot of damage against this many archers, especially with the TOV. Lucy, very careful about the timing on this. Beastie, looking for that commitment. A lot of units going down here. Jean's soaking the XP once more. She's the backside of this fight. She's being sniped right now, being brought low. Lucifron does lose the Jean, but the Knights it's have to keep knights. committing. Lucifron's retreating. Interesting. Really? I think oh. I'm surprised. There we go. He gets the big engagement. Beastie looked away for a second there. Cost him a handful of archers. Spearman a bit too far away. Second wave of archers from the French is coming in. The Spearman count right now for Beastie doesn't scare this many Knights. They once again engage. Garzi do at least have that, that higher base damage, but it's not as high as the Knights, and you can see the impact of it. Both of them throwing their armies away, but Jean is back and back with a vengeance. No Divine Restoration. He's trying to go for the Snipe again. Cleave comes in, gets some more XP, and it cannot be denied. The winner of this fight is Jean. Lucifron hits You're level free. three at a pristine timing as Beastie loses the army, and he loses the game. Wow, that was incredible. That bait... I think actually lost the fight for Beastie. I think he had more units there. I think Lucifron was right to retreat. But Beastie kind of started pulling his Ghazis to go deal with a raid, I think. There was a raid, I think, on like near his base, near his woodline or second berries. I'm, I'm not exactly sure where it was on the minimap, but there was that raid coming in. He pulled the Ghazis because he thought Lucifron was retreating. And Lucifron like paused for a second, looked at the archers and said, oh, yummy, and just charged in, smashed that front line. And that fight turned really rapidly. Um, Jean going down was useful for BC there, did force the buyback, but I'm not sure if it was enough. Like, uh, well, obviously it, it would have been good. Oh, but... 
if oh, the man. archers didn't hang around, right? That's the, you, yeah. what you're highlighting there is such a big detail. And by the way, that's Lucifron in a nutshell. That raid distracting you, that's what he's known for. If you ask top players, what is Lucifron's play style? Raiding. He is so comfortable mm -hmm. raiding. Beastie is more about dragging this game out, getting it to be about a macro game, right? Playing the wide flanks. That's what he loves, but didn't get a chance here. And the fact that he lost about six or seven extra archers, you saw the impact. When Jean came in a second time, she didn't die. She could have been sniped very quickly there. But being able to soak that XP, you know, I, I know I can already imagine, I don't need to look at the chat. I imagine there's some people that feel that's broken, but what you need to keep in mind is this was two players putting their entire mind, body, and soul into the fight. And part of that, especially for the Delhi, is a premium price being paid. Those Ghazi Raiders are actually worth more than Horsemen, which means they're worth more XP as well. So when they get counted out like that, it is going to look bad. Great opening, very fast game to start off this series. Puts Lucy up a game. And I think that puts Sean around about 40, 45% win rate overall in this tournament. So still a negative, but an improvement. And I'm happy to see Delhi actually getting whooped there because I, I was getting this feeling that Delhi were just kind of starting to run away of this matchup. Glad to see it's closer than we thought. Yeah, I think Lucifer showing that there's always power with French Knights, no matter what, <laughs> right? Like you don't need the fancy schmancy eco bonuses when you have just Royal Knights. I mean, they pack a punch. Um, I think Beastie tried to get some value out of his Ghazis. I think potentially, I, I don't want to criticize too much, but potentially a bit of an overinvestment in the Ghazis. I, I think there's a point where they kind of hit a wall in terms of the French play. And I think Lucifron really capitalized on that and even added Spearman. Usually French are adding archers in behind because it's the other player who needs to add Spearman first. But BC's kind of commitment to the Ghazi there, I think could have bitten him a bit, but I'm not exactly sure if that plays out differently. That could have really come down to micro most of the most of that so yeah i it, just impressive stuff from lucifron is all i really have to say yeah the archer placement is critical there like them yeah. getting caught like once again mm -hmm. the amount he lost initially there that's an extra six or seven gone you saw how low jean was getting when she came in again she could have died back to back there if there's yeah. a few more archers by the way shout out to zaddy trying to be eegc's daddy i see you coming in with the 20 gifted people nice. keep it coming this weekend's your last opportunity to show egc your love donating to them. Uh, be sure to check out the Patreon. I know that's a big selling point. The reason I want to read you guys there is because A, we get much more of the moolah than what you'll get over here on Twitch. B, if we hit a thousand subscribers, supporters across on the Patreon, it's going to force the hands of Pesty to announce a LAN for next year. So get in there. Donate to the cause so that we can get the LAN pump. And I don't know if it's going to be Vegas levels. All I know is I will be twisting his arm and making sure he's honest to it. He did say before, 1,000 subs on Patreon equal LAN. Yep. That would be so incredible. I, I can't... I really can't wait for the next day before LAN. It can't come soon enough. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. I'm already hearing rumblings of people who are interested in running some in 2024, so I'm excited yeah. to see what the, you can hold. I mean, this has already been a phenomenal expansion. Right? I think it just got announced on Twitter yesterday that this is the best-selling expansion in the history of the Age of Empires franchise, which is bonkers, incredible. It deserves to be for the raw content that's added in. Part of that content we're going to actually get to see in game number two, because Lucifron oh. has gone for another new Civ. Surprise, surprise. The guy who's probably played the most permutations alongside his bro and scrims is going to go for something new. And Beastie goes to something comfortable for game number two. He whips out the HRE for Prairie. Lucifron goes to the Ayubids. Yeah, and we talked a lot about Ayubids so far today. We've seen them a lot, and I think we're going to continue to see them in tournaments to come. The question is, what is this Dark Age going to bring in store for us? We saw a difference of opinion in gameplay from both Puppy and Vortex earlier in the set previ previously. So let's see, does Lucifron do the same as his brother? Do we see, you think, a uh, reinforcement wing into um, <laughs> into FC with the uh, advancement? I'm well, not sure. It has not been doing well in the quarters and semis so far. Meanwhile, I mean, Master Smith's 100% win rate. Don't you dare. Don't like <laughs> I, I'm going to kick going you good. out of the cool. It's been but, going okay. well. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest something controversial here. Trade wing bizarre. Bring it back. I mean, if there's a map, you you literally have an 8k gold, which, funnily enough, for Lucifron has spawned in the back of his base. Very if there yeah. is a map post nerf to do Trade Wing Bazaar, this is the one, I think. This might be the game. Hmm. Maybe. So, Prairie map with extra sheep, right? Um, generally. Double right? scout from Beastie. 
Yeah, double scout from Beastie to help secure it. As HRE, that's really important. Um, we used to see the double scout like almost every game from civs like HRE who could use the sheep to, under the Akin Chapel, go up FC. And maybe that's a counterplay to Ubids we haven't really seen yet in the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, be, I'd be really excited to see if there's something in Castle Age that Beastie knows. I... Just, you just go... There's no way it's like think... a Burgrave play, right? I don't think you have to go Burgrave. BC historically doesn't like going Burgrave, and Regnet still works pretty well, but it's just the double scout play. Actually, it's fast becoming the meta for HRE players right now. So, um, of the it. prolific HRE spammers on the ladder, people like Fitzy here, who's back playing AoE4, you've got Core returning as well. They always go double scout opening. Makes a lot of sense on this map, especially with so many sheep. And what it means is you have enough safe resource that you can even contemplate rushing Imperial Age. Yeah, that's that's a really fair point. I think I think we'll see it. Yeah, because it used. I mean, it used to be almost every save to double scout, right? Except a very few. Um, uh, for a while, and then it became more. Then, uh, you had to go double scout against Bruce, right? And then everyone went back to one scout. I think that was mainly when it became about like second TC. But mm -hmm. when we had the expansion drop, there was another nerf to town center spamming, right? So that yeah. has fallen off a little bit. So the sheep count looking good. Generally for both players, Lucifer getting quite a few. Of course, he can do the berry opening, so his scout hasn't returned yet. So 24, probably even a few more for Beastie. He's probably gone through a few versus 15. Yeah, so Beastie's double scout play definitely pays off. Under the Akin Chapel, that's going to be extremely effective food income for quite some time. Um, and we'll see how he handles that. We'll see what he goes for here. Could it be a, a feudal approach, potentially? I'd be surprised. Um, be surprised, uh. yeah. Yeah, especially when your opponent went for military wing. Once he sees that and knows it's camels, it's like, you don't really want to find that. Like, civs that build range units laugh at it, but this is HRE. But if the Ubids are going reinforcements right now, which I think mm -hmm. they are. Unless they are. That's Master Smiths. Uh, just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, if they're going reinforcements, um, what that means for us, how does Beastie control relics if he's FC here? He definitely needs units, right? Won't the Camel Archer, or sorry, the Desert Raider just deny... The Regnets? That's the this tough part. This could be part. a very sad HREFC if you don't have resources, right? Well, well let's map it out, though. Gold. So, you, to your point there, right? He's going to get his Feudal Age at like four, four and a half minutes. Then you get a Camel every two minutes. HRE can easily be in Castle by like, what, eight minutes? Eight and a half minutes. So you're probably going to have two, maybe three camels. Guarding all this many relics might be difficult. The trajectory might make it feasible, though, because if you look at the pathing from BC's base, he has three lines to get relics. That's it. So there is a world in which you get enough camels to guard this, but it's going to be tight because that isn't just assuming you have enough camels. They also have to be in position. Seems like Beastie was aware of this. His, his build order seems really clean, so he just sent the four bills to stone for one long haul, and that's enough for the Aeroslitz upgrade on the one outpost he built. So that's going to hopefully zone away that Camel Archer, or sorry, the Desert Raider, <laughs> the names, the Desert Raider <laughs> from uh, denying the uh, denying the gold income, at least for the time being. I think permanently, right? Because like, unless you want to actively build Desert Raiders, you won't dive this. Desert Raiders only have 120 health. They have zero ranged armor, five melee armor. So if anyone wants to come fisticuffs, they're happy. Anyone wants to shoot them in the face, Kind of sad. I do find most people are sad when they get shot in the face, but this unit in particular. Yeah, it's definitely looking like Lucifer is doing the Ayubid FC behind this. Should be advancement wing then. He's going to need them. Yeah. Uh, it's sad. If he had more time, I actually think maybe like the nerfs to the Ayubid's like tech up timings were a bit harsh. Maybe like I just want to see HRE lose a game to this counter build, but the reason is I'd say like otherwise maybe logistics would be feasible here because logistics. Those three uh, Cambulances coming out at this stage in the game would be a perfect mirrored counter to the HR replay. And BC can have to go to the Strag on the other side of his TC, which is not in the Aachen. Oh, actually, no, there's still wood in that Strag. Maybe. Oh, he's actually going to the Lumber Camp here. Needs to be a little bit careful because you can still poke and prod. I mean, you could mm -hmm. pile the Prelate to heal intermittently because the Aachen's applying the buff for uh, 30 seconds, right? So you yeah. can heal between. Love the fact that the Scouts. <laughs> Got to use them annoying. for something, right? It adds up over time. You know, and Ayubids don't have the most obvious healing choices early on until they add the mosque for the Cambulance. So oh, wow. we'll see if he does that. Advanced Swing for... should be coming in pretty soon. It's what, 820 food? 
Yeah, but look at this. BC went for Horseman, which um, this is kind of a typical thing Atri like to do, but against the Iobids, a bit surprising, right? However, if you catch him in range form and he forgets to toggle, he's not going to win the fight. So BC actually gets a good licking in there, brings the camel alive. And he has got another Horseman running across the field, maybe looking for exposed eco. Yeah, if, if his scouts hadn't been... <laughs> idling or just idling on the berries he might have seen that there's vills walling in some of the relics and that could be oh uh sees him now hello well uh, what that's one raider down so actually ordered, a great yeah. exchange there oh, for he, BC. Sees it. he sees it Villager. that's a huge that's... pickup that could now, be even, scary, the, honestly. even the desert raider will not be able to stop this because no. of course you move quite faster with the horseman so just moves away afterwards and Regnitz is now on the way. And, you know, the cool thing is, like, also, who have the ability to pump units behind this. The other thing that I Why think is Landmark? really good... He's doing bizarre. He's... No, I, this has to be... This is logistics. Oh! Logistics. Can I just... I don't get yeah. many things right, according to chat, but... Oh, that was impressive. Once. That was impressive. It, it's a smart build. Like, like I was saying, like, the... If it wasn't for the nerfs, this would be the no-brainer count as HRE. But the extra 15 seconds does make it a bit tougher. There is a window, but that's why I love the reinforcements here. The only unfortunate detail is Lucifron losing one of the Desert Raiders means he doesn't block all the relics anymore. Yeah. No, that's really interesting, for sure. I Second, even a second stable coming in for Beastie, so it looks like he's thinking about Knights. And now Beastie's the one who's going to need to be worried that Lucifron's going to grab all the relics, because the logistics wing hits fast. Regnitz is going to be up, but he can't even get one of the relics right now, right? Uh, you can get, can get the one to the south. Yeah. Beast can get the one to the south. Central one is walled. He knows about that. He's already got someone guarding the northern one. And I think that's because he wants to try and count the ambulance. Keep in mind, logistics gives you three dervishes straight away. So, mm -hmm. Lucifrom, in a minute, will have three fast-moving religious units. They move as quickly as warrior monks for reference. So, compared to prelates, they can actually match the pace, even though Beastie's up sooner. Well, an interesting thing about the... The Cambulance, sorry, the Dervish, as some might call it, <laughs> the uncultured. No, <laughs> the, uh, the Dervish is that it can actually, like, outrun a horseman. Like, not outrun it, but, like, it can tank for a while. It has a and lot then of it can HP, heal. and it yeah. can just walk away from a horseman. So one horseman guarding a relic isn't enough to stop a Dervish from grabbing the relic, right? No, it shouldn't be. It's and and also, I think I think we have a term here. When it works, it's called a cambulance. When it doesn't, it's called a derpish. Okay, there we go. That's that's the resolution. We're about to see if they're going to work, though. Ten seconds till they come. Two more knights are coming out soon for Beastie. And it looks like, as it stands, one relic is on the way home. He should be able to grab that mm. second one. He's already got a product now moving out to the south, and that's completely uncontested. So Lucifron could still get the lion's share three to two. But it's looking more like it's going to be a three to two split in favor of Beastie at this rate. Yeah, and you have to keep in mind that 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 upgrade, the the the, the culture wing upgrade for the Ubids to get these dervishes, that's most of what their upgrade is. He canceled. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought he just like a uh, pump fake conversion. <laughs> for a second. No, it's so, so they get they get There's an extra thing, which is the the ambulances get increased healing, right? Like yeah. the AOE heal. Well, but I don't that know rarely how... comes out. Well, along the north side, he's gonna chase them away, but the prelate Ooh. isn't gonna get away free with this one. Almost walked back in there for a second, min-maxing like a beast, Lucifron. But now the knight arriving up against the dervish. They joint the southern relic here. They won't be able to get away. And the northern relic. Uh, I mean, BC isn't <laughs> stopping these. Nope, he doesn't want to fight it. It's desert raiders versus knights. And those desert raiders, they haven't been upgraded is the interesting detail here. They're still just fuel age units, but they do pack a punch. And now with the lancers arriving as well, there's no easy way that BC were to take these engagements. Yeah, this is really tricky, and the Dervish just going to carry that Relic home. That's a really good split now looking for for Ubids here. Lucifron got to be happy with how this is going so far, but we'll see. Once the Regnitz gets even just one or two Relics, things start really taking off for the Civ. So we'll see if uh, HRE is in a good position. If they get three, that's it's still scary for Ubids here. I mean, if it's two versus three, it's still kind of scary, right? Because the effectivity yeah. of the Regnant's being double. So it still actually puts HRE ahead. Then you have to consider the Arkham Chapel buff as well. And it looks like he is going to go for the wide wrap with that Southern Relic. We still have one in the Palisade in the center that neither side has played for. Clash coming in. BC with the number advice, trying to get them low enough, but can't find the snipe. Reinforcements are arriving. So he has to back away here. 
notice that there is a, a purple glow on these lads. They're not feeling well today, and that's because of the Camel on Ease reducing their damage by 20%. That's why the Knights are losing so harshly. Oh, Villager Snipe, don't mind if I do. Camel Lancers have found their way towards BC's base. Yeah, this is... This is really tricky. I mean, the position here is really, like... Does Beastie just try and macro this into Swabia, you think? I, I think that might be it, right? I think so. Like, it's it's a go-to play for most H3 players, and I know historically Beastie loves doing it. He's even bait me into believing that a game that ended up being lost very clearly, he could recover it because he's so good at optimizing that Imperial build. And I Who's think this front? game, maybe he has the space. If he gets enough spears together, I don't see what these Lancers can do. Lucifron hasn't even built the monastery yet, or the mosque for... Uh, yeah, he's just dropping them off, right? He's just dropping Wait, them off. Oh, no. What? what? Oh, I guess he built it okay. now. Okay, okay. Yeah, because the dervishes, like, they're either out gathering or they died, right? So he's yeah. just going to bring in a new one there. Saving a lot of food and gold as well. I think that's just a lack of gold income, not some sort of cheeky Imperial player. I mean, he has still got advancement in theory. Could be. Well, all coming out early. Beastie quickly ratcheting there. He's going to get baited by that. Look, there's no way this is an advancement. There we go. I was about to say, that I don't know what you get out of advancement Imperial as I bids here. So he's just going to reinvest. He's adding in more stables and now the archery ranges as well. Yeah, you're going to have to find a way to scale your economy, though, if you're Lucifer, because you know that if this game goes much longer, it's just going to very quickly become a Swabia problem. And Swabia is very threatening, especially because, like, Lucifer doesn't have, like, a big infantry mass yet. He's only got, he's only got the Desert Raiders alongside the camel lancers right like it's it's not I mean, yet a threatening force and the yeah. speedrunner are on the way which are going to handle both of those generally i mean the desert raiders obviously are going to have some opportunities but are they even upgraded i don't i still think there's no the desert raiders still two field. pit he did drop an archer range so i think like I, wait is, no, that's not even for the desert raiders is, for, is that for archers that's fed archer yeah that's, yeah so he's he's just switching archers which is very risky on this map. Prairie doesn't oh, have much spearmen. wood, so scaling this isn't easy, right? Yeah, but he saw the Spearman, so maybe yeah. he's just thinking that's a good play there. He's just generally good against HRE. Force I was wondering if... Arms, slows everything down. I was actually wondering if he'd try and scale Desert Raiders, just because like that is maybe a more efficient unit because the movement speed it has, then you could just toggle into range mode. But no interest in doing it at all. I guess like the issue is it's micro heavy and it's not fast. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's it. I mean, this is starting to become that threatening force. Lucifron has now shored up all of the relics. They're all sorted. Boxes? Oh no, uh, uh, that that is not a good fight. Surely, Lucifron. He's not looking. I think he's not. No, looking. he's distracted. Night raid comes in on the villagers on the backside of this. So in the end, the lancers, a few of them survive. But I mean, that's not what you want here. You know, Beastie's economy is better, so you can't get these even exchanges and I kill one unit, you kill one unit. Regardless of the cost, it's also the fact that you just don't have an economy as strong right now. And they dive in on the villages, striking a fruit down. Beastie, look at the worker kills, 12 to two so far. Beastie, of course, having the more superior economy as well. Most of it eventually gonna be under the Arkin. Yeah, and it's, it's really scary for Lucifron because if he ever decides to invest in something like a TC, That'll slow down his army so much, and Beastie will scout that oh pretty quickly, God. probably. And it, the second Beastie scouts a TC or a castle, like a keep somewhere, like the second that happens, Beastie's just going to go imp on you. And it's, it's, Lucy has, it's just going to be so much higher. Lucy has no food. Like, he just got spotted again. on. Like, look at his food income right now. I think he just shifted on the north side again to get a little bit. But this is this is getting worrisome. And the Camel Lance account, losing the ones he did, now down to nine. Beastie has that many knights. He has 18 spearmen. He's not saving for Imperial yet. He knows he has to fight, but these fights are getting better and better for the HRE. Yeah, this is really crazy. And uh, he's even getting inspired warriors, so he's feeling really comfortable with his position. We're going to start to see a lot more prelates on the field here, I think. Oh, boy. That's that's interesting, by the way. I haven't like done a thorough test on that. Um, does the... Does Camel Unease remove damage before you get the buff or after? Because I think it would, would it change the numbers it just, slightly? It's just it was... equal. So it's yeah, like it's equal, you right? minus 20% plus 15%. It's like you're minus 5%. Right? Yeah, so you're pretty much, you, you've even steamed it. So it's an interesting read because it, like, it's a bit hard to maintain because if Knight's right away from the Prelate, you're not going to be buffed. Yeah, but it's hard to do right now he's turtling. Let's see though, the army mass kind of securing the central sacred site as a Knight. As a, is that a group of spearmen or Knights on the right here for Beastie? 
Uh, it's All nights. Night, so By the way, the where's line. the food? <laughs> Where the is here? the food for Lucifer? <laughs> oh no! The wood's been found again. Lancers are out of position. I mean, at what point do you, as Lucifer, admit you need spears? Yeah. Because this ain't working. Norville's going down. It's so many dead. Good for BC. He's up 15 bills. He's got the regnets with two relics. I, I think the dive's uh, coming in. If, really bad if, if Lucifer oh. doesn't get a trade here, this is GG. Wall well, low attempt's gonna come out. Gonna push him away. I mean, there's a mass amount of spears. <laughs> Second wall to make sure he leaves. <laughs> Just relic after relic here from Beastie. And, I mean, if you can't find a lick in here, surely this is it. Like, Lucifron needs to find some damage. And Beastie taking the time there to micro the TC onto the archers, while Beastie's spearmen would then just clean up the fields. Really incredible play there from Beastie. Honestly, it looked a little dicey there with the game plan of the dervishes, like from Ayubids, like grabbing a lot of the relics and trying to keep it low. But like you said, even scary if it's three to two for for relics for Beastie. So he was able to handle it with only two and yeah, Lucifer just didn't really have that transition plan after that, right? Like it, it didn't work and there was no transition afterwards. So it kind of fell apart there. And I guess he knew if this fight loses, it's just going to be well, way, way, way over. What I mean, a, what it a was, crazy game. That was awesome. It was an incredible was awesome. game. I, I think, honestly, the conversion point, I think it's a learning moment. I imagine Lucifer already kind of processed where it felt a bit weird is the Camel Lancer's long term up against what you know is going to be a spear transition. I think that's where it fell apart. If he'd gone for the, the Desert Raiders, it's more micro-intensive because you have to toggle range mode to deal the spears, but you have mobility and a way of dealing with them. That maybe would have served him a bit better. Also, a cheaper unit to scale into than Camel Lancers, right? Does mean that the HRE can try to go archers, but once again, like the limitation we saw for Lucy of going archers, there's not much wood on Prairie. And yeah. credit to Beastie, man. He played Prairie to the maximum. He loves this map. He, he's very happy and content playing on it because he gets to play the HRE. And as we saw... If you find yourself with the cavalry advantage, able to find those raids, breaks the game wide open. Breaks the series open to go further as we are now 1-1, one, one, which means we are, bare minimum, going to get three more games between these two. And look at what we're getting. Another powerhouse Civ classic on Four Lakes versus the new kid on the block. Once again, the Japanese, this time appearing against the Chinese. Shinobi. I'm excited to see Shinobi. Lucifron playing at the Japanese. We saw Puppy play it, and it worked so well in our previous uh, yep. semifinal match. I am really excited to see how it works this game. I mean, obviously, Roost didn't, there wasn't as much opportunity against Roost to like deny the docks in interesting ways. Against China, maybe? There are some ways to use the Shinobi really creatively here, but I think more just the idea of Japan on this map is really starting to grow on me. I think even without the Shinobi, having having really cheap fishing boats and having a really smooth macro, having clean resource acquisition late game, having a really tight and defense defensive base. It just seems to all play into the Japanese favor late game, but Chinese have historically been a very strong late game sieve. So if we do get to that late game, once you have that flood of food, China also can spam palace guards at a really crazy rate in castle age. So if you have the food right with just like one, one barracks. So stuff like this, yeah potentially going to come into play. I think most importantly is going to be pun control. Can't wait to see it. This is going to just be battle of the best. Oh, man. Love it. Uh, it's a historical war. We've seen plenty of times. Now we get to see it in game. Japan versus China to break game number three of this best of seven between Lucifron and Beastie. Beastie will be taking the Chinese under his purview. A classic Civ, one he has plenty of experience with. Lucifron. One of the grand experimenters ready to show us what the Japanese are made of as we take to Four Lakes. Yeah, and we see ooh, Beastie building his dock in like a prime position that could get sabotaged. Yes. <laughs> just, just to <laughs> note, just to point out, that could get sabotaged. It's interesting though, because I think I've been, I, you know, I've been running the numbers. I've been down in my crazy little man lab, Winston, figuring it out. And I, I gotta say, actually, like, of answers to Japanese water hybrid play, we are now today seeing the two sieves that can do it. I think Chinese and Roos are the front runners. Roos, because when you see them, they get the fishing boats, they can convert into archer ships, so sabotage doesn't matter. Where China can potentially match the Japanese 
is in their ability to tech up faster. Their build speed cannot be discredited here. Even something like a Barbican drop actually next to that dot could be a big deal here to block any Shinomi shenanigans. I imagine that's something that BC has in mind here. And actually, with the way this is spawned, his gold is next to that dock. So that might be a plan to cover a small wood line, gold, and the dock, and block the Shinobi opening of Lucifer. You know, that, that could be the plan, like a small wall there, maybe something like that. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I, I'm not exactly sure what your plan is against Shinobi. I think even on hybrid maps, as as the DLC has been explored more and more, I think there's still a lot to see where the meta goes with especially tricky units like Shinobi. The, the possibilities are kind of endless, which in a way sort of makes the defensive possibilities endless as well. There's a lot of, I think, iteration that the... The meta needs to go through to kind of settle down somewhere where it's like, oh, we see the situation. We know how it should play out, right? I don't think we're there yet with this matchup on this map. At least I don't. <laughs> I mean, maybe other people feel very confident, but I, I still I think I need a lot of time to understand. I don't how think this four legs is even in ranked rotation right now, right? No. That's not yeah, so so like you know, a lot a lot of these players, like some of them will scrim a lot. Like Lucifer and Vortex, they scrim all the time. Beastie tends to get a lot of his practice on the ladder, so like it's a comfortable matchup from him knowing the Chinese historically, but the, like you said, the Japanese, so many permutations to explore. That could be an edge here for Lucifron. I think we mentioned at the start of the day, Vortex and Lucifron, they tend to look better when new patches happen or different tournament formats are being used because they practice more in a custom game environment than I'd say any other player right now. Hmm. Exactly. And I think that practice definitely, like, pays off um there's also been interesting conversations around like the secrecy of that practice right lucifron and vortex like practice together a lot and bc you know kind of famously he practices on ranked ladder while streaming the whole time so it's definitely some interesting elements of like who knows what about each other's strategies right um some interesting conversations just to have there about you know is an advantage could bc be hiding stuff that you know we don't know right like there's all sorts of stuff it's it's really, I love the mind games of strategies like this, especially when you have bigger series like a best of seven like this. There's there's so many like layers to it that you could consider. And oftentimes it's not that complex, but it's fun to talk about them, right? Like, oh, it's oh fun definitely. To think about, it's, like all those little it, details and nuances that you know, little decision points could be affected by XYZ knowledge, right? Love it. It's that interesting thing as well. Is like, is there, could there be an argument like, you know, I'm not going to say it is this way, but it, it, I could imagine a few players being like, it's less like they want to practice with Beastie because he's going to stream the game. So you'd have to have that agreement not to. That can maybe be tough because it's Beastie's livelihood. Um, but, you know, I know he hasn't been streaming as much the last few days. I think he did tweet out that he wasn't feeling too well. So maybe he's resting, recuperating. Or maybe it was a sneaky little move to get some scrims in, which I would be such a big fan of because I love this idea of maybe a bunch of secret strats from both players, but nothing secret about this. He literally builds it at the front of the base for Beastie to see the Gokka Township on the way. It's going to switch to be five villages building it up. And keep in mind that Beastie hasn't extended onto the second pond yet, so very difficult point in the game. You're going to have to see if Beastie is going to go for that Barbican drop to protect the dock. It's not. It's Imperial Academy. Yeah, no, Barbican there is interesting. I think he can add the Barbican pretty quick, though. He's got four on gold. Yes. So I think uh, he'll catch up pretty quickly. Okay. What? How did he get here? Yo, forget the Shinobi. He just <laughs> Lucifer no, himself this is, is the a Shinobi. Ninja. This is the ninja. <laughs> what? I didn't even see that. Sorry, red green colorblind. Not even able to see it on the minimap. That was incredible. My and gosh. By the way, check the vision of Beastie. Like this is the crazy part. Lucifer is going to see Beastie's attempt. Beastie doesn't have the vision to see Lucifron's. Look at how perfect that is. He's literally on the edge. Oh my. Oh my god. Beastie's <laughs> gonna be kicking himself. How could you expect this? Who would do this? I mean, not the Japanese, right? They're all about stopping your docks, not building more of their own. Oh my god. And he pumps the archer ship straight away. And look how many fishing boats there are here. Now, positives oh. for Beastie. He does now see it. He dropped a second dock, and these docks produce quicker. So this play shouldn't add up to much, surely. But Lucifron, he goes in for another dock. And with the archer ship there, Beastie can't deal with that villager. Lucy realizes it. Says, get off my villi. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. Beastie. He actually went on the offensive, by the way. His first aggressive bow is in Lucifron's pond. Oh, man. 
So the trading out some fishing boats is good, but here come the shinobi. They're gonna idle the dock on the north. Oh yes, the burn already. The second dock is at least operational. Fishing. The fishing, beastie. He's losing a lot here. A lot more than Lucifron. Oh. Out. comes out. Second dock can't work though. You can see it's permanently disabled here. Fishing is gonna come out to play. Now, Lucifron, there was a slowdown here. Is he going? Yeah, he's going for the Springwood at home. So he's getting rid of this archer ship first instead of going all in. And he did actually lose additional ships in the meantime. Great micro there by Beastie to get value with this opening archer play. Yeah, this is interesting. The Vill's gonna go down now to that. Oh! Demo? Oh! Lucy gets the find. Archer ship came out afterwards, so now you don't have an easy way of dealing with the other ship. You can at least push the Shinobi away, but the torch down continues here. Still, that second dock wow. not working. Demo doesn't clean up Lucifron here. In fact, he might get the final few shots in. The archer ship can't deal with this now due to the fishing boat. So it looks well, like that's real. There's a repairville in there. Ooh. The Checking Shinobi side. just getting Shinobi. taken down here, trading away their life for some idle time. Everyone has to pull back. Demo is oh, coming another demo. in here. That's going to connect. Front. I'm, he could try to body it, but like, you know, the problem is this demo hitting here and the fishing boats might just lose him some instead. Instead, going to wrap around. Detonation oh, wow. just about clips it. And also heavily injures the fishing boats. So they're going to have to garrison. Lucifron still feeling heavily pressured. Meanwhile, Northside Lake, Beastie is starting to hold. Shinobi numbers aren't really scaling at this point. He's down to two. And it looks like Beastie might actually have the better side of this now. What is the blue dot on the right pond? That is another villager. Oh, wait, Scout. Okay. So he's okay. checking. He knows this is all in then. So he understands if he just doubles down the offensive now, Lucifron's going to GG because he won't have any fishing at all. I mean, dude, would you want to play versus Chinese fishing with no fishing at all? You can't, yeah, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe this is the case. It's, it's spooky, but it could work for BC if it works. It, it could work if it works, you know, for back, back to, to this analysis. But, <laughs> Sub for this type well, of analysis, it's just, ladies and gentlemen. He's invested in the emplacements. I think he's okay. thinking about this long term, right? Like, it's not really... I don't think he's the thinking most, this though. is going to be how the game... Oh! Nice reaction well, from Beastie. Well, barely tickled. Beastie, he's going to clear this up. It looks like there's no repair crew here, right? The villager is long gone from that area. I think he went to the afterlife. There's a pushback. Meanwhile, Lucifer's own late, but New Spiral comes out, shoving him away. Well, looks like these nice little emplacements are starting to come out on both sides by the looks of those fires. So, yeah. I actually think Lucifer is going to lose control there. Meanwhile, on the southern lake, BC's not moving. He's actually, I, I think he's kind of winning that fight, really, if you think about the investments. That Demo's going to trade out. Oh, oh. BC, not paying attention there. Lucifer, what a great bait. Pulls him back. Gets the trade out. So as soon as I say it looks good for Beastie, it flips around again. But this north side kind of feels like it's just always going one way, right? Like the dock has added a lot in, but with no repair, it's going down in the next minute. Yeah, and that's a pretty big deal because that's the one with the emplacement. Mm -hmm. Unless fact, Sprinkles might get the shot. He's housed. Oh, now he's not and the demo oh. comes out. Oh, he's lost the emplacement now though. Yeah, losing the emplacement is pretty huge. I don't think the other one has an emplacement. We would have seen it shooting. No, it, it's and it's not building one right now. It's actually he's, going for the archers. He's up on this pond, so both players are just going to get their pawns back. But Beastie with more flesh and oh, an archer archer transition. Yeah, so he built these to deal with the shinobi, but that, that, that was a long time ago. The fact that Beastie has four archers here, heavy idle time. Lucifer had 500 wood income a minute. He just idled all of that for 20 seconds. BC also critically has the first wood upgrade, so this entire time his wood income has just been a bit cleaner. <laughs> as well as being China, so I'm guessing the lumber oh. can't be revised, right? I, I imagine so. He has at least one IO, right? And did that that attempt, I, I have to appreciate it. Lucifer on the amount of different yeah. waypoints that demo is going to, but it's just not going to be good enough. Too much fire coming in, and BC starting to look good here. I mean, it is one lake, like you said, they've secured on each side, but the difference maker is the arches. Lucifron doesn't have a land transition yet, which means he's pretty oppressed on what he can do on land. In fact, his gold is about to get raided here. Outpost is coming in though, so Lucifron should be able to clean this up. Yeah, that's that, that, that's interesting from Beastie here. Using the archers to get a little pressure, see the map, force out the towers, but then what? Is is he looking to just keep making feudal? It doesn't look like it. it looks I like think he's going. Yeah, he's going Lucifron for multiple legs. Is, 
Ooh. Dangerously close to Castle Age, right? Yes. And it's going to, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be the stable opening. Against this comp, like your opponent built Archer range. It, it's kind of a no brainer. This is an interesting recovery mechanism for Lucifron because I think if he kept engaging with this back and forth, probably favors Beastie, right? Like he was starting to get edged there. But Lucifron, he sees the positives of what happened north side. If we check that pond up there for Beastie, he's got, what, four military vessels up there? Demo to count the Archer ship, Lucifer. <laughs> I love yeah. this little micro there. That's insane, yeah. Oh, man. So there you go, he just deleted them. So he had, I think he had four military vessels. He's still got two left over up here. And God knows what other investment. The crazy part as well, by the way, is it looked expensive for Lucifron because of that emplacement. But we have to remember this is the Japanese. He was getting that emplacement stone by gathering gold. You get 20% stone every time you drop off gold. Yeah, it's really clever. Now floating gate coming in, and like you said, the stable, so it's gonna be equivalent to what, three stables? That's yep. That's and tricky to deal with, and Beastie sees it, as long as he's looking. Well, he, in fact, he he's coming stables. in with his horseman. He, yeah, so but it's horseman versus samurai, and there you go. So he knows he needs to add in racks. He's a smart player there. The, the thing that I think makes this so oppressive, by the way, with the Yurashiro drop, it's not that just it's free stables. It's that it's three times faster is the way to think about it. That yeah. gives you a very strong timing, right? Like, um, remember for a while where, where Prairie was still in rotation, like English to count HRE was decent with White Tower Rush because you got Knights out twice as quick. It's that same kind of effect, only this one, it's three times quicker. Mm-hmm. Horseman just trying to stop trying it though. To just torch this down a bit, but it's going to be so hard. Pumping out the knights here, yeah. Yeah. The there only upside it. right now <laughs> is that like it's not going to be an Uma Bannerman because he doesn't have the Daimyo upgrade. Uma Bannerman come out of this stable in five seconds, and they are yeah. a knight, which is it's a little bit bonkers, but balanced in the fact that you know you're limited in Bannerman count, it does cost a lot of stone. And so we've traded pawns now, both players securing another one. Beastie already fishing on the one on the right, though. Look for the villager, oh, little yoinksy there. Yeah. Nice I thought he that. might try to attack this, this samurai. I guess it's just not worth it. The damage on your horseman is reduced so heavily, and also the mount samurai has a better attack speed as well as higher damage. So just tries to bait mount instead. Buys this enough time for the steam is coming. Under Go pressure. On. Well, it's under duress in a, just a moment here. The knight comes in. BC seems to be aware. He has got spears. Or is he walking towards it? I think he's about oh, to he's run that knight into his death. Well, hello. Good time in there. Lucifron buying a bit of space here. And looks like that raid on the gold should fail here. Lucifron ends up just walking straight into a line of spears. So good positioning. BC read that perfectly. And look at this. It's not going to be any siege play. We've got Imperial Pass coming. In the meantime, a deny on the dark. BC is not able to get it up on the Western Pond. We'll have to shift away. Now we see that temple coming down, or that's a shrine. How many shrine docks is th th <laughs> Is enough. that two docks is from enough. each player? It's <laughs> that's all you that right side dock is, is, is insane. Um, <laughs> something yeah. crazy here, by the way, is like right now, Beastie, if he rushes a monastery up and supervises it, he could try to combat the relic grabbing. Problem is, I don't know if you can do that because it's just horseman versus samurai, mount samurai at the moment, which is not a good matchup for the Chinese. Well, he's got the he's got the spears, but not quite enough at this stage. He's queuing more up behind the upgrade, so he'll have a, a, a decent chunk of spears out in a moment. And he's just demoing this dock. He need, he knows he needs to kill the dock. If a if a ship comes out, it's going to be so annoying to deal with. Mm -hmm. The good old get off my lawn strategy. There? That's a hole. Okay. Uh, the annoying thing is these mad samurai do not handle spring ships very well. You've seen how heavy they get dented. So demo ship should get it low enough. One ship is going to come out, but BC should have enough to clear that one up. Second mount samurai is going to be a bit annoying, trading out the horsemen. Overall, not a bad exchange, actually, for Lucifron when you consider the amount of cav that went down for Beastie. Yeah. But, I mean, BC keeps his dog alive. And in the meantime, BC got a cheeky dock up over here. Which is going to be trading a, a Hulk, I believe, to deal with that. That's very interesting. We're coming in. Lucifron. Interesting to even try huh? to do this samurai. Like, I, wait, what? It, it, he has two nurse yet. just staring that down, by the way. It's, it's, it's fine. Oh, it's efficient. It's not worth it anymore. <laughs> no, it's efficient. Okay. The, the other interesting thing, though, is like that Mount Samurai, I'm not even sure if it's worth being there for Lucifron because he's never getting that kill. He could have had them raiding into the eco because Beastie. 
is starting to build a lead. You can see a 71 now to 63 economy. You need to find yeah. some damage because so far, Lucifron has only been able to start returning one relic. It's still not even home yet. Yeah, it, honestly, this lead would be a lot larger, but Beastie hasn't been able to afford even Song Dynasty, right? So, like, imagine if he had Song this whole time. He'd be up, like, 10 bills. <laughs> Wait, we're, 10 we're more building more than he is. We're building more Shinobi, by the way. Like, that, that guy was actively being produced. Lucifron, the build looks a bit discombobulated, right? Like, are we building knights? Are we building archers? It looks like we are going to be getting to Yumi now. Has he upgraded the TC? I think he must have Daimyo level 1. If he gets Yumi with the Yumi Bannerman, this can be really strong. Still no Daimyo upgrade. It could be coming in now, but it looks like Lucifer wants to add a TC. At least with this mecha. Yeah, he just plops a TC yeah. down in the back on the deer. Which makes a lot of sense, right? He needs... He needs more eco-scaling if he wants to keep up with China. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's going to be pretty soon that Beastie can either song or tc himself he's not on the stone yet but with this vill count it, it happens fast these transitions right yes i think the the interesting thing here is actually like if, with the second tc if he can get into the daimyo and start scaling this yumi it's a really solid count to what beastie's got sadly he has to reveal the yumi really early look what beastie just primed instantly pass guard now on the way these will tear the yumi to shreds the the idea with this unit lower base damage lower health but a lot faster to move. Doesn't work yeah. well against Path Guard though, because they move at the same speed. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's a big mass of units here for Beastie. This fight, even though you have Yumi, which counted the Spears, there's too many units here for these yep. Yumis. There's only 12 of them on the field, only about 10 here. They're gonna have to also, run. Undermesh has been researched already, so you're doing even less damage to these Yumi. The first, yeah, the first attack upgrade just barely in for Lucifron. It'll be here soon, but it looks like BC going to back off for now, preserving mass, keeping things larger. Um, it can be really strong against um, against Japan to focus down these buildings. So if this Spearman mass ever gets to that front exposed part of the base, they could just kill the Yoroshiro base buildings and kind of set that all back a couple minutes. Right, well, this is a, a couple minutes, great couple play, minutes. by the way, from BC. That long wall... Seems a bit greedy, but you just saw your opponent transition mass range. If you get this wall up, he has no way of breaking through. So, really smart read by Beastie. It means that he can just focus all out aggression instead of having to defend. Yeah, I'd love the addition of a few crossbows. Get enough up to really threaten the the knights here from Japan. I feel like Lucifer has to think differently about how he wants to approach this game now. Um, I think he thought he had a game plan, but I don't think Yumi Knight, like you're saying, I don't think Yumi Knight is going to be the solution for him. And BC's just being so annoying with this dock. Still yep. spamming out demos, forcing attention, forcing micro, forcing investment. Uh, of course, he himself is still investing in that dock, but it seems to be paying off in that. Monk will probably be fine. It's got the body shield from these Yumi, and it could always will low, and it will threaten to do so. Beastie's gonna hard uh, commit to it. The, the crossbows, though, they're there. The Yumi's damage. on the run. Wait, he's got a monk there that can pick up the relic. He's still got one more monk after that. Says thanks. Bye. Have a good time. Um, it's gonna be a slow walk away Treat. though. A long walk home. takes out a Shinto on the exit. Great exchanges for Beastie. There's another monk. <laughs> We're all here, what? boys. <laughs> we gotta get these relics. Beastie Micro, no. Oh, that monk stopped. That might be his death. This relic tug of war is getting ridiculous. Yumi moving in. They snipe him again. How many people have died in pursuit of this trinket? Not I mean, enough. You call Keep it going. a trinket, make it seem frivolous. It's worth something, for sure. Where would the gold come from? I don't know. Anywhere else at this point, it feels like it would be worth it. I yeah, this is just crazy. And Barbara Time finally coming in for Beastie. In the meantime, Lucifer on the second TC play has really panned out. I think he also invested a lot more into that Fusion Bowl, which might be an overinvestment. We saw that from Lucifer on, or sorry, Vortex earlier this morning. Uh, and and that turns out we've, we've got Robotnik. Uh, let's quickly reconnect. Vodka might want to do the same. Robot voice? All right. Testing, testing. Are we back? Are we good? There we go. Oh, okay. Thank God. I... Now. 
Okay, cool. That GPT is getting pretty smart. I don't know how they got in on the broadcast, but we seem to have blocked the firewall. We are back. This is a historical game. We don't need robots. But these guys are playing so clean, you'd think that they are impossible AI. Beastie, keeping the pressure up, is behind on economy now. Lucifron, with that 2TC play, has moved ahead. Song has now kicked in, but the thing I'm keeping an eye on here are these farms. When the Daimyo levels kick in, this is where the Japanese get really scary, when they find that land transition. But the Chinese can do similar if they find the granaries. But right now, the only thing that Beastie's looking to find is the eco of Lucifron. Yeah, and... I'm not sure how this is working. The build count for Lucifron is still going up. 95 to 77 to Beastie Beasties. The raids on him are also pretty painful. The build mm -hmm. count killed is pretty even. Oh, but wow. It's getting better and better for Lucifron every moment. Oh, my. They, 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 these are palace guards. There's not enough spear here to stop him. He's just going to wrap around. And I don't think Beastie's wolf this north side. So if he doesn't notice that, there's going to be a lot of villagers going down. Nestabee's in the meantime. This is a fantastic counter against Yumi. They are squishier than normal archers. They die incredibly fast. Not just that. Villagers from Lucifron are not going to find an easy way home. They have to pivot to the left. Knights have raided in, though. Beastie is reacting with a few palace guards, a few spears. But the deaths are adding up in the Chinese Empire. Yeah, and... The Another note about those bees is it's really sick against a, like a lower ranged unit as well. And like the Yumi oh, yeah. lacking the range, it does have the mobility to try and avoid the shots, but they have to get in close and personal with that mobility and maybe picking a fight they don't want to see these. Oh, he's just <laughs> blind Dude. shooting over the wood line. <laughs> trying to shoot that was them. A good guess. One saw that happening and ran away. A good idea from Spot. Beastie, but not going to work out. Oof. See the power of the bees there. It's like a little red backside is going to get cleared up. But this is the thing, actually. Is, so I feel like for a long time, people looked at Yumi and they... So far, I say a long time, we've had a month this expansion. But people <laughs> yeah. think Yumi is the, the memeful unit of the Japanese. They're actually not. They're very strong in numbers. You have to think of Yumi similarly to anyone who's played StarCraft, like Zerg. The classic Zerg, Zerglings. It's another blind shot from BC. I love that he's trying to play Minesweeper in, mm. in a semi-finals here. But the, the whole <laughs> idea of this Yumi is they scale really well. When you get the steel Arrow upgrades and then add in Abandonment past Castle Age, the damage really starts to ramp up. Yeah, and, and he does have one of those ranged Bannermen. You can tell it's ranged by that little circle over it. So it's somewhere. We don't know where. I think it was the North team. North squad. Like how we've got okay. like different, like yeah. North team, South squad. Like, like this is full Delta Force operation for the Yumi. Okay. Yeah, I think he's guarding his gold right now. So looks like things have slowed down. Yeah, the walls the, are the breach. up, right? Almost. Mm -hmm. Are they done? I think the walls are basically done there for Beastie. I but think so. The vil count for Japan here. So insane. Did Lucifron put a Yorishiro in a TC? Yes, he, he did. did. <laughs> so that increases the train time. So that's a counteract. That counteracts Song Dynasty really nicely. I was wondering, how is he keeping such a big vil count? But if one of his Yorishiro goes there, it makes a ton of sense, right? And, and also, he's capped the Beastie Chinese, like, fishing boat spam, right? It's two pond versus two pond after all the dust is settled. So Beastie really is just like, you know, he's gone flash for TC. It will start to catch up a bit. Like realistically, it's only one Yurashira TC, but when Lucifron has this type of eco lead already, it means he's going to reach pop cap first, which means he could reach Imperial Age ahead of Beastie. But we're not going to look towards that yet. It's still a big clash coming. Beastie on the forward. He's gathering stone. He's looking for the keep drop to block out the wood. No, this... This wood line is really exposed here. Where are the bees, though? Being I love that he's taking out the shot. He's chopping his own wood here. Here comes the sun. The sun. <laughs> bees are going to burn him out. <laughs> yeah, bees, he, he's just going to run away now. So I think he was thinking he had enough stone for a keep, but it's a bit short. So many spears. No just mangonel play. It's just raw Yumi mass here. Tickling in. The crossbow's there to counter him out, though. Spearman chasing off the village in the meantime. Even the Spearman ship joining in to take a lick of the Japanese. Nessa the bees, bees, if they get one the fire off, if they just get one. Here it comes. Loser from too late to move away. Heavy damage oh. there. And he loses 10 in the blink of the eye. 10 and more all injured. The rest are all low. Even the Spearman can do well now. And, and now the... Can't do oh anything. my gosh. He's got more Springles as well. Oh, actually, no. The Springle count is even. Oh, no. Nope. Not for long. <laughs> that one spawned out on the north side. Nessa the Bees on the villagers. There's so many of them. Textiles keeps them alive, but barely. Look at those HP bars. Army is gone. Lucifron, where is it right now? Like, is that all we've got? Just this group of archers to defend? It's not looking good right now for the Japanese. Lucifron oh on the ropes. That's the bees. 
More Yumi down. Village so is being pulled. Damage. The Vills get oh pulled. Oh my god. They're dead. They are so dead. Nesta Bees are going to be exposed. The Yumi get cleared up and the Village is diving for that. That means that Lucifron, by the tail end of this fight, I think he's going to be behind on economy. This might be I over. Agree. Yeah, no, he will. He will. There's so many Vills in the north here that are about to go down. And, oh man, this is a crazy fight. That was so well executed by Beastie. And behind this, Sacred Sites secured. 8k gold mine secured in the middle. Game I think secured. he built a keep somewhere or a TC. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I, yeah, uh, keep going up in the middle there just to secure that 8k. And that's going to put him in such a good position. Forcing Siege out of Japan. Now we did oh see God. Puppy Paw in this position. And he was able Whoa. to do something similar, but it felt very different. Right, Puffy very, was very relying different. on Yumi. His base didn't feel as exposed, and Vortex was taking his time with the attacks. Whereas Beastie is just all relentless. gas, no breaks right now. Yeah, because by the way, this is the zombie apocalypse. The Chinese uh, level one, level two is coming, and it features more Palace Guard. Yumi yeah. do not beat Palace Guard. The the funny part actually about Yumi is because they have lower damage than standard archers. They don't fare as well against Palace Guard as normal archers would, right? You know how we usually say is like Palace Guard, their weakness is less ranged armor, so they don't trade as well as like men at arms. When you get this matchup as a Chinese, you kind of feel like you're actually using regular men at arms. Just they move very quickly. Yeah. What the, oh, that, oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it works, right? Well, the, He's the going to try and now... push him off that dock. And I think he will. Like with that rush up, also the main uh -oh. army, the uh -oh. Nista Bees, if uh -oh. they see this, uh -oh. Uh -oh. archers diving in. Lucifron moves back just in time. That would have been pure death. Ooh. Yeah, if BC had been looking at that, that would have been just one of the most insane moments. But thankfully for Lucifron, he got a little lucky there and noticed first. How lucky though. Nesta bees are in range. You're not escaping at this time. Yumi, half of them just gone. House guard, I'm going to try to defend this as the Matt Samurai wrap around, so they'll at least make it somewhat good exchange. But you've oh, lost man. all the Yumi. There's still two Nesta Bees to play with. And there's a lot of economy exposed here for Lucifron. How I, I don't know how he defends this. <laughs> and this is, this feels over. Look, look, the pass guard are in. Like, it's the classic oh. moment when the pass guard get freedom into your economy. There's nowhere to run or hide. Beastie will prove himself the king on four lakes as he takes game three. Yeah, uh, like absolutely incredible game from Beastie there. Uh, like the, the water micro from both players was honestly superb for the whole start of the game. Um, that was really fun to watch. I loved the creativity from Lucifron um, in that early stage. Getting that dock behind Beastie's base was just like, what? How did that happen? And yet Beastie somehow was able to react and turn that what could have been really bad into net neutral, right? He got a dock of his own up. They both kind of traded for a while. And then in the end, both players secured their pawns. But... It's hard to say who invested more without like really going back and mathing it out, but it felt like BC had a bit of an advantage there. But then once the, the Yori Shiro on the town center really kicked in, I was a bit scared there. Lucifron had a huge economic lead, it felt like, and BC just wasn't able to deal with it initially. But those fights, the bees were so good. It looked like if Lucifron had like one more Springled and had won that Springled engagement, we're talking about a completely different game. Isn't that crazy? Like, I think... Yeah. I think it was like that close. Like, oh, he just kills your spring alds, then kills the bees, then fights your army. And I think without the bees, that fight is completely different. Um, ob like, obviously, right? But I, I think the, it, it's interesting to talk about it. It comes down to like such small things as like one or two more spring alds here. And we're talking about a very different outcome to one of the most pivotal fights in the game. Um, it just goes to show, I think, how close these two players are, how close the competition is amongst the scene and how great of a game we just watched was. Um, oh, yeah. I think it's awesome. I think that was just fantastic. Now, the, the interesting thing as well is like, Yumi, they do feel a little bit weak. We've got to acknowledge that there, right? Like, but the, once again, like the, I think the intent with this unit is because they're cheaper than archers. You're meant to like be able to outmatch your opponent. I want to just give so much credit to BC for like being able to have the counter. I do think, by the way, this is, pr that was probably the hardest sieve. I think that is the hardest sieve, obviously along Zhuzhi and Bees and Teens, they have Nesta Bees as well, in the game to mass Yumi against. Because mangoes actually don't counter Yumi as well, right? Like, because the, the spread, I think, is what makes Nesta Bees so lethal. Because you can't stagger 
to try and reduce the damage. So well, there's also definitely mild a... tracking, right? Like the yes. has to be like it's it's volley kind of follows you, so it punishes you for just being close to them. Whereas the Manganel, you we've seen it time and time again against the Manganel. These high level players can almost nullify the value of a Manganel on a fight. Whereas against a B, it's every shot is going to get some value, right? No matter who you shoot at, that one target at least is going to take some damage at some point. It's almost impossible to to entirely negate the damage, um, which makes it so much more potent. And I think BC just showed Xen why he's such an excellent China player. That was incredible. So, <laughs> I love that game. That was so fun. <laughs> are we going to see why he's such an incredible Japanese player? Because we're getting back-to-back. -back. Maybe back-to-back, -back, Yumi, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll it's see. the return of the Delhi. They were in game one, they'll appear again in game four in the hands of Lucifron. But now Beastie says, let me show you a little something about the Japanese. It's going to be on Rocky River, which actually is an incredibly popular map for the Japanese right now. I think one of the most picked sieves there. Also works really well for the Delhi, though, because of all the berries you find, especially around the center. Yeah, we'll have to see. I, I love it. I love looking at it. I love playing it. Oh my gosh, let's see it. Let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> Oh, so, I'm so, so hyped this, right now. <laughs> I mean, you should be, dude. This, this is going to be cool because I cast a lot of ladder games. Like On my own channel, I cast so many ladder games. I don't get to see this matchup because outside of one or two sweaty boys, not many people want to pick the Delhi, right? I think the, the when I talk to one or two players, the feeling is that even those new permutations to do, the idea of how the Delhi function is still the same, if that makes sense, right? Delhi, because they tend to force you to play their game, it's not as much learning required as like these other new sieves and other old sieves in the new sieve matchups because you your script is more or less the same. Unit comp might be different, but the whole idea is I get sacred sites, you come play. What makes this map interesting is why the Japanese are typically very strong is the dock play because they can sabotage with the Koka Township. I think the Delhi aren't even going to go for docks. I think this is just going to be a feudal rush, possibly into Gazi Raiders might just be into archers anticipating the investment into ninjas from the Japanese. I'm not sure. It's an I interesting one, right? I haven't seen this map. Um, you were talking about Japan earlier being able to just dock the middle yep. really effectively, and they have really good units to deal with that. So if this, if this becomes a spearman match in the middle, I think Japan is pretty well suited for that, right? Although I'm not sure, players have been, I've, I've been seeing some chatter and some games, some players forego the water altogether on this map because each pond might not be fully worth it with only, what, three fish? Some Most have four, if I recall. GST mutes you and he moves forward. It is going to be a dot on the right side. Yeah, so, 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 so I don't know the matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, so, so I'm sorry. <laughs> let, me, yeah. uh, let me explain it as a, a Japanese yeah. uh, main. So the whole idea and what you're talking about, sometimes it's good to rush Koka Township because your opponent's going to dock. If they dock, you know they're not going to have archers to counter. They can only build melee units against you. So you, rushing that Koka Township, getting the initial Shinobi out, just blocks any sort of defensive play on the lakes. In this matchup, because you know the Delhi are not going to go for the water, I mean, they shouldn't realistically here. It's just not a big edge for them. BC knows he can probably get one, if not two lakes, uncontested. Would love to see if that's the plan here. Someone that I was thinking might be interesting is if BC can force Lucifron to not go for archers, I think Onobugi should slap hard against Delhi. Like, they destroy Ghazi Raiders. I, it's actually quite funny. Like, my little tip to people... Really? You, yeah, well, because they attack so fast, right? And Horsemen and Ghazi don't have any melee armor. Mm -hmm. So, like, surprisingly enough, Onobugisha, like, you still want Spearman, but the reality is if you go Spearman over Onobugisha, you can't gap close. Whereas Onobugisha, they're, they're mini cavalry, right? They can kind of pinch you. They can force you to fight even when you have Horsemen. So, interesting to see if Beast will try that. It is actually a feasible strategy with the extra food as well. Interesting. Yeah, I'd never thought about that Onobugisha. <laughs> And horsemen match up too too much. Um, doesn't come up that often, but probably should. If if yeah. That's so we. I like that. Do you want to crunch the numbers? Because we got like a no. quite early game, right? <laughs> yeah, do, do you want to nerd? Okay, okay. Can, you you sure? It's, right. your, it's your call. It's your choice. So so these are guys that are a little bit stronger. But horsemen, as an example, they cost 120 resources. They do eight damage. Uh, Owner Bugisha can be scaled up. I think they start at six if I remember correctly. They go up to like eight because you can get the melee tech upgrades. So let's say, like, you know, you're going to have 10 damage versus 8 there. The attack speed of the horseman is literally double the Onobugisha, as in it takes them twice as long to attack. Their health is 110 on the horseman, 
The owner Bigisha come in at, I believe it's 80 in uh, the Fuel Age, which means like if you think about the, the comparison, right, they actually trade evenly because the owner Bigisha cost 80 resources, the horseman cost 120. So pretty wild when you put those numbers into consideration. Um, so yes, yeah, 85 health. So 85 health to 120. So arguably, like for raw health damage, like costs in the clash, Bugisha are better. And because the Japanese have two melee tech upgrades for damage, when you only have one melee defense, they remain better against horsemen. I see. Okay. We've nerded. Told, I mean, <laughs> you lose the move speed. I mean, you're still fast though, but yeah, you, you lack the... The, it's the difference is like with Spearman, they have to charge to get up to 1.44, the 1.25. Bugisha are 1.5. So like, if you're yeah. thinking from a defensive standpoint, Bugisha can more easily block any raid attempts, and then they can go and counter raids. That's that's the thing I like about them. It's like, it's not only can you defend. If your opponent stops attacking, unlike Spearman, you can actively kill their eco. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, there's kind of an issue there where it's not a horseman, so it's lacking the range armor. So, like, raiding under an outpost or a town center is just yes, very unfortunate for the Onubagatia, but I definitely see but, the merits there. That's It's always so interesting. There's so many details <laughs> in this yep. DLC to uncover, right? It's it's so awesome. Dude, I'm a, I'm a nerd for them. Like, Onubagatia yeah. is actually my favorite unit. So Because, like, like I said, you start at 6, you go up to 8 damage, right? Like, I think that's the interesting thing as well. Maybe the Delhi can handle that fire, because one thing they... One edge they'll have there is that the... Japanese will have to actively get two melee techs while you'll get them passively around that time, right? Um, but once again, the difference is going to be one side has food here, the other doesn't. Lucifron has the tighter timing for Feudal Age, but Beastie, because he knows there's not going to be any fish to contest, it's going to be the Kura Storehouse, which is going to give him a lot of scalability and actually could make this Onobagusha play even more feasible. I have, a, I have a nitpick question. Is that three tiles away? Uh, two tiles yes, away. that that so so the or way it's two? weird. I, I so I've done. had some weird experience. You're talking about the the daimyo like aura right, and where no, that'll the, hit, no, right? the Kura storehouse. Oh, that's two tiles. Away. Sorry, my my brain. Yeah, no, he's the right direct. He's I the right thought distance. that was so an extra tile across. away from the two no, 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 no. Been, But I'm just it, when you're playing, it's obvious. But when you're looking at it, I don't know why <laughs> my brain just turned off. We're good. We're good. Back, we're, we're back good, to reality. Back to reality. <laughs> yeah, so he uh, he retracts it as well because he knows he's going to get raided. He can, like, wall himself in. This is something really nice about this playstyle, by the way, on Rocky River. You seem to consistently, from all the games I've seen anyway, get a wood line to your north and south up against the edge of the map. And it's very efficient to wall yourself in. In fact, if you look, Beastie's already doing it on the gold. We could be seeing a fast castle build here. Yeah, but is that smart against Delhi? Aren't you giving oh, no, them yeah, at it least is. a few sacred sites? No, no, it is. It, it, Trust me, like, like, look, Sanity's not ready yet. Look at BC's bank. He's got 400 food income. And he's going to rush mm. the gold. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, with the double dock, he'll be okay. With the Yorishiro as well. Like, yeah, that's Yorishiro the really reason the stable, why it works. I guess, is the play this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah trust, trust me, cool. Winston, I, like, I actually, uh, yesterday on my stream, I saw, I don't know who it was. I don't think it was Beastie. It's definitely a Smurf. I saw an incredible Castle Age build up against Voldemar. I think he had castle like eight minutes. And this is fishing, so it should be, in theory, like maybe not as quick initially, but it will have more punch behind it afterwards. This is yeah, spooky, we'll man. We'll see if he keeps that dock in the north up, but I think the dock on the on the south pond um, has gone un, unscouted at this stage. I, I don't know if I've seen a red unit notice that. I could be wrong, but... Um... Also, keep in mind at this stage, like Beastie, the fact that, that Lucifer's trying to deal with that dock, it's not fast, right? So... He will eventually lose it, but it's paid for itself by the time it's dead, oh, sure. at least. Yeah, yeah, those fishing boats have surely gotten at least like 400 food, right? This is such a sick build. I, I actually think it's going to be Ona Bagusha. I mean, well, not initially, right? So he'll open Samurai, and then he'll win the engagement with Ghazi, and then like the follow-up is usually Bagusha, just because they're, they're cheaper, just more cool. effective raiders. There yeah, you go. This is the Knights. And oh, you'll be seeing the... Clean. You'll be seeing that floating gate drop right next to the stable. Someone that players have quickly gotten very good at. It's important to whatever you're opening players with Yoroshiro, put the building right next to it. You're trying to minimize the amount of time that the Shinto priest has to walk to drop off the Yoroshiro so that he can then actively move for the relics. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, th these little details, right? It's going to come with time. And I love that so many people have already picked up on so many little details with this, this DLC and all these new saves. It's, it's crazy how much life it's brought. To the game. By the way, yeah, I love it. Details that matter. That's another cool one. He went berries first. 
I actually think I watched BC Smurf yesterday. <laughs> this is exactly the build. So you go out onto the, the berries because he's probably got level two wheelbarrow, which means he gathers from berries 50% faster, which makes it a ball gathering rate. So now that he gets harassed, he goes back to all those sheep. He has plenty of food. What the hell is happening with this ball? <laughs> dude, the boar, Puma just went on a journey, my dude. That was oh so funny. God. He's going on another one. <laughs> That is so good. I love that. I mean, delaying that gold by that long, like, he, he, we laugh, right? But that was like, what, 50 gold maybe for Lucifron lost with all that idle time? That's so it funny. And, and this is so tight as well. He even goes for the tire wall to make sure there's no dives from the Maskazi. It's on the way. Now, interesting detail here. Beastie, he drops the flowing gate on the opposite side to where his stable is. So if this is going to be a stable drop, you're a Shiro. A little bit of suboptimal play there. It's going to be some missing time. It might I mean, be that it was kind of a bait play. You're talking 10 seconds, right? I think Look, we're trying to perfect here, TC, man. Right? First one in the TC, right? Um, I think if he doesn't want to rush, sure. But like, if you don't if you don't build it in the stables, there's eight Garzi that are going to die for you, right? Yeah, I guess you have to go to the stable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, off we pop. So straight over to the stable. And Lucifron now hesitant to go in because he's waiting for the infantry to arrive. That's going to buy time to get into the initial mounted samurai. As we'll see them queued up here. But does Easy. this work? Does this work? Like, this is what I was concerned about. Like, his FC's hit. And mm -hmm. you have Delhi with all three sacred sites. Like, the gold is coming in. It's going to be really overwhelming. There's the dive. First night. Trying to body block this, but immediately... Lucifron knows what his target is. Now, there's some garrison points here. Four in the Kura Storehouse, 15 in the TC, and five for an outpost. But that's still going to be a third of the economy exposed to Beastie. And looks like instead, he manages to force all the Ghazi to chase after the first samurai. Gets some crucial breathing room here. If he can keep that uh, samurai alive, by the way, I think you sack the scout to try and block. You could heal it with this uh, Shinto Priest, right? Yeah, the Shinto's currently picking up a relic, which might come into play as he's now walking back. He did build a gate on the northern side to get through the wall. Dive into the eco. Oh. Lucifron, he needs to get some serious chip damage done here. He's got the Sacred Size, yes, but it's not enough to do that. If you just leave BC in this corner, he's going to come out with a Fury in about two or three minutes. We are seeing the Daimyo Pass upgrade, which I believe increases the damage the arrows by one as well, right? So about to get a lot harder for Lucifron to dive. Oh, BC, maybe overextending here. Keeps the samurai alive. This that could be really important for the like if that Shinto priest can heal it up. Did he actually I mean, grab a relic? Oh, he's just yeah. He, he dropped there. off here because he's he like look at his eco. He's got a lot of gold, not enough wood yet. So kind of a problem there. Well, he's about to get another Shinto priest for the healing if he needs. I think he's just gonna move out though without it. I think he's Maybe gonna try to wood? wrap wide to get the relic on Lucifer's side. It's a really long walk for the Shinto priest. Mount Samurai count though up to five. And we all get the steel arrow. This is big. This this is actually what he needs to start scaring these Ghazi a bit. Ram, one is not going to cut it. He's going to need more if he wants to try and dent this primary. Ghazi, wasting a lot of time on the front here, but BC idled out oh. a lot in the meantime. The dive to the backside. So you're this is the on the Yorishiro. Oh, can he get rid of the stable quick enough? He's actually baiting him. Beastie has to take this fight. And this is a hard dive. Lucifer on throwing mind, body, and soul out at Spim and R in the mixer, which means that those samurai are going to start dying quickly. But the arch is exposed on the backside in the meantime. Lucifer on looking for that pinch. About to get two more of the Mount Samurai down. Moving on to the eco. The dive through Lucifer on. He's A clicking right now, which kind of seems problematic here because there's a villagers. They go after the ram. That could be a lot of dead eco right now. Beastie, he's playing a dangerous game. The ram stays alive for the moment. But the new samurai should be able to clear it up. However, the stables is now on fire. Beastie, if you want to keep it, you're going to have to fight for it. I think he's dead. I actually think he's dead. It's one samurai. He's trying to build more stables, but and they're not your assurance. I mean, not that it matters. Beastie has a grand total of 41 food, 157 food a minute. And the sacred site timer is now down to seven minutes and ticking down fast. Yeah, and his last remaining wood goes into this stable in the north. Because he just He's needs got so military, much gold. But he doesn't have resources. Yeah, he needs to a market maybe could have saved him. Oh he's dead. Oh, uh, he gets this spotted. is so dead. Oh, okay, That's it. Yeah. That I expect the cool now. Beastie, never wanted to give up, but it's looking like it might be time here. Villagers caught out. A few are going to go down. And the crazy part is check the minimap. He's actually got more red units diving into the main base to cut off these villages. I think those are Ghazi Raiders, right? Yeah. <laughs> Straight under the town center. Oh, 
man. Rough game. I actually thought the BC was going to try to keep the Shinto Priest here and at least try to, like, clutch Wallalo for a hostage situation, but... You're saying rough game, but Beastie hasn't quit yet. His, no. He's got another Yori Shiro. He's actually this pulling one's in, a home. in a really bold <laughs> spot. <laughs> and mean, a new ram coming. He's just got six minutes is my problem, right? Like, he's got yeah. six minutes to clear this out. Lucifer's economy is really solid. The, the, the Sacred Threads have really kicked in at this stage. He's just rolling in gold. I'm sure he's been buying food, maybe, at, with the market. Um, I think... Beastie's issue here is like he needs another Yurishiro. Because like to your whole point is he's not dead yet. Even though his economy's back online, the problem is the pressure's gonna keep coming. And because it's not a Yurishiro stable, it now takes 35 seconds to build your army. Oh, he one unit at a time. Forge for eco. Yeah, so he now has three units to defend with. One of them's a Shinto priest. So there's a wall of play here that buys you five seconds. Ram breaking through the wall. Going off the float gate is kind of interesting, but I think that's just because he's waiting for the dive, so now he's going to commit into it. Can't afford to lose another Shinto. Like, this is kind of adding up, right? Does get the garrison in time, but that's going to be a torch down. Ram, if it targets onto that forge, that's a lot of lost value in this castle age timing. Beastie, can he at least decap the Sacred Sight? He was moving a samurai out earlier, but you kind of need everyone defending at home. Wow. I mean, this is a dismantling, right? Like, Lucifron. He understands the only way he loses this game now, realistically, is if he pulls back. Yeah, he, he can afford to just keep throwing units away like this. The timer ticking down also really helps him out. Also, keep in mind the thing that's keeping Beastie alive is he has fishing, right? But that's that's not eternal. That's gone, yeah. Yeah. I think he still has them, but it's like it's finite food, right? It's 2,000 in each bond. So yeah, he's got a little bit left, but if, yeah, that's the last one. The food that he's been getting hasn't been from his farms. Those have been idle practically this whole time, right? So that 300 food tick is going to dry up soon. Life continues. Lucifron still maintaining around 40 military here. Oh, these villages. The nerf that Kira still has, just not enough garrison room to try and protect extra. Nice body blocks coming in from Beastie to at least protect the samurai, but there's only so much you can do when the spears arrive. It's crazy how much destroyed value like Beastie has like, put together here. He just keeps killing units. The town center <laughs> is always killing something. If the town center has been shooting because it's idle nonstop. So what we were saying is they're going to run out of arrows soon, right? Maybe. Probably I not. mean, Beastie has been finding... He's been finding kills and... He has. But what is the average health of villages in this world right now? Irrelevant. Like, no, no. Select, select over every one of those villages. I want to see who's actually healthy. Decap, by the way, if he just he has oh bills on the hunt. God. This is scary. I mean, like Beastie. Like you said, it's not over, but this is such a hard game. It's three minutes until the sacred site victory, and like he could try to go for the decap, but if he shows villages there, that's all of his food right now because his base keeps getting dove. Lucifron has reset. He isn't consistently diving anymore. Can we check his base? Can we check the market price in Lucifer's base? It has to be getting expensive, right? What's the price to buy food? It's food buying. We're looking at. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he uh, has to. Can buy we food? take that secret side to the west, by the way? Because like, <laughs> oh man, he's not gonna get the decap over here. It's two and a half minutes. He's riding for the right side. This actually might be the perfect read because the dive is coming in on the base, so he's at least gonna be able to remove that wing condition. But we are here once again to celebrate the life and passing of another Japanese village. More than yeah. one, in fact. It's, it's a group funeral. Coming. And you can see Beastie Wald, he knew that the timing wouldn't be exactly in his favor, but I can't imagine he thought it would be this rough. Painful. Yeah, yeah like Lucifron has just been sitting under this town center the entire game, trading away units. And by the way, like he's doing it against like most players would have GG'd out, but Beastie on record says if there's a one percent chance to make a comeback, he'll play for it. And you know, I actually respect that. Genuinely, like some of the games that I've watched over the years in esports, why give up the opportunity for a grand turnaround, especially when it would put you on match point? Which, by the way, when you go two up in a best of seven, the strategic advantage you get throws the entire series off tilt for your opponents. So I don't blame Beastie for trying to call this back. It does look unlikely. The Sacred Sight wing condition has been protected. The Samurai could not decap in time. So Lucifron keeps that wing condition alive. He's now two minutes away from a victory by Sacred Sight. 
Yes. But it, has he won the game yet? I think he's going to be able to do it. I, I don't see on Beastie decaps now. There's too many units. There's a huge line of soldiers just marching across the field through the center. And I, I don't see how Beastie decaps no, anymore. It, it's... Unless the one on the left is getting protected now. There was a huge window where the, one of those vills could have just walked over. I but... think he was paranoid though, right? Because that was his only food. I kind of understood why Beastie didn't do it. Because that was his food lifeline to try and get troops. But the, the biggest issue I see, and it's kind of hilarious that Lucifer's still building arches, right? Is because Beastie only has tables. So if Lucifron just spammed only Spearman and ran to each sacred site, there is literally no world in which BC can decap it. You know, a minute left. I think this is looking really rough here for Beastie. Uh, he put up such a good fight trying to defend this, but Lucifron, man, that, that aggression was just so clutch. Like, mm -hmm. he literally never let off the gas. He wasn't too afraid of the town center. He knew that he was getting value. He knew what was coming from that. And as such, he's now 55 seconds, well, 57, 55 now, seconds away from winning this game. And he I, uh, did send a YOLO villager to go defend that. But the yeah. walls are up. There's Only no way the now. Only the center site remains. And select seconds. all military. Everyone's run into the middle. <laughs> it's oh, just not going to cut it, though. I mean, the, I think what you're seeing here as well is like the nerf to the Yoroshiro. Starting with one instead of two meant that, that Beastie didn't even have unit flexibility, right? Like, imagine if he could have instead had like Maybe an archer range backing up that play, or like a Rax, right? And got a few samurai yeah, out there. He didn't have food though. He didn't have any resources. That's true, but like he continued to pump pump samurai warriors, mount samurai that cost double what samurai do, right? So thinking from that perspective, maybe we'd have had a few more units to tank while the TC whittles away. Unfortunately, um, this is looking like the end of the row for the Japanese. They ain't gonna nab a win in this series. Five seconds remain, and the torch through is gonna be too late. Lucifron takes game four. Yeah, and you, you have to wonder if the FC against Delhi works with the civil like Japan. I mean, maybe if the landmark itself was a production building like Burgrave or some, like, like, like something like that, maybe. But it just doesn't pan out. You're making units into like kind of a counter situation with the Ghazi and Spearman already on the field. So it's not like you're getting like a man at arm, which they would really struggle against. They just have a couple Spearmen and suddenly your knights can't really do too much, right? So Beastie needs to sort out what, what that strategy leads to with the FC. Um, I don't think it's like a bad strategy by any means, but um, it, is, uh, it is interesting. It's, it's an intriguing one as well, because you can, like, theoretically, I think the fishing was worth it. It sped up his timing, maybe. It, it's kind of a weird one, because, like, fishing's the delayed return, and if you're going fast castle, it feels like any time you're going fishing, you're slowing down your timing. Mm -hmm. Realistically, it gave him more food to work with when he got there. It's just a, a tough matchup. I think especially TOV, with the extra attack speed of the spears, makes him super effective against this play. But I like the Beastie kind of experiment a little. Against the Delhi, like, do you really want to be playing a prolonged feudal with Japanese? Probably not. You could have maybe tried to play around fishing, use the archer ships, and then just kind of like play it a longer feud. That might have been an alternative. But Beastie, experiment with that fast castle build. It has been super effective on the ladders against a lot of sieves. I imagine he hasn't got much chance to practice it against Delhi, considering how little they are played on the ladder, though. So maybe a little bit of a, huh, what do you know, type reaction moment. But it does yeah. mean we get a longer series. That's what I'm happy about. Yeah, it's tied up 2 2 now. Lucifer not able to scrap back after. Maybe a rough game three, but a decisive game four. And now we move on to Himayama. Ottoman. Seen this before? Huh? I've seen this matchup before. Was it Marine Lord versus Mister? John Ottomans. Uh, it was the most memorable Jean game because literally Marine Lord countered Jean with a single tower and then didn't come out of his base until Castle Age. Wondering if we're going to see similar here because hmm. Ottomans are one of those sieves that. They benefit a lot from Castle Age Unlock, right? That's when the passive reduction really ramps up. So my instinct here is that Beastie is going to be left holding his two-handed sword and have nothing to swing it at until Lucifron is ready to buy. Yeah, we'll see. I think, I think there's a lot of different ways to approach how you counteract John Dark. Yeah. And we'll see how Beastie handles what Lucifron pulls because... I think a lot of people tend to think that like Jean sets the tempo, but in a lot of ways, if you play right, 
the opponent can kind of set the tempo and John has to deal with it in a way. Like, if you set up a situation where in order to play aggressive, it's just way too expensive or the fights will be bad for you, you kind of have to think, well, should I still play aggressive? And then obviously you have all those issues with Sean Dark that we've spoken of before, right? We saw that multiple times if you just kind of play passive, Jean can get star from XP or she can fall behind and then get one shot by, you know, enough of the right kind of unit. So we'll see. Um, I mean, I think BC will have a plan here against Ottomans, though. Yeah. You're saying you've seen this matchup before. I don't know if I've seen it recently. I've seen it on this exact map in this exact tournament. Um, and it was like, it, it okay. was not even close. Like, Mr. literally couldn't get a single piece of XP. He just mm -hmm. sat there staring into Marine Lord's base. Marine Lord dropped a single outpost on his gold, and that was enough. Um, so the, the tough part here is like, the alternative play, right, is to scale archers as the Ottomans. Get enough archers, snipe Jean. One thing that makes that a bit wonky, we saw one reason why, like, going hard onto wood can be your downfall when we watched the series earlier where, like, Longbow sniped you out, right? Obviously, there's no Longbows to worry about here, but it's a similar idea if you're, like, exposing eco. I think what makes Himeyama really uncomfortable is that you have very limited wood in your starting area. So that's a raidable point. So usually the safer play from most Ottoman players so far has been just go Castle Age because if... Feudal goes long enough, even if you get the Archer Mass, you're probably going to run out of wood to sustain that. But mm -hmm. Lucy might have a different approach, right? That game was Marine Lord that's willing to take that more defensive approach in that environment. Lucifron is a bit more relentless, I think it's fair to say. Typically, he will look to set the, the tempo and set the pressure, similar to what we saw in game number four. So we might end up with a Blood Buff. What I'm curious to see is if he does come out and try to make that play, will he try for the dot? Because the Ottomans do get that cheaper. However, it's a big risk against Jean. Yeah, Jean, like, as a villager, Jean has a lot of potential, right? We've seen, like, does she add a tower? She can kind of fight with all that extra HP. Like, she can kind of oh, do yeah. a lot of things. So it's like, what do you do against her, per se, right? You don't want to make spears into Jean d'Arc, right? If she makes spears, she's going to be really happy. You know, early feudal age, and she's tier two. Maybe, maybe on the way to tier three, it's a bit scary. Could you imagine a dark age where she's just tier two? You have Dark Age oh, Spearman oh, against, <laughs> against John, and she's just cleaving you? Like, what do you do? You'd have to lose so many units for that to happen. <laughs> Maybe. Mean, it, does that make John good on Canal? I think John could be impressive on Canal. Like, I'm still... You know what? Actually, I'm going to call it Cliffside John Outpost Rush. It's going to happen one of these days. It needs to happen with that build mm -hmm. speed. But you know what? It's not going to happen in this game. We move into game number five. To break the tie right now in this best of seven. Beastie whips out Jean d'Arc, Lucifron with the Ottomans. And Ottomans at the moment are looking very effective up against Jean. Let's see what Beastie's got in mind to break that meta. Yeah, we're going to have to see what he's got up, up his sleeve here. I mean, I think Jean's one of those civs where there's loads of different ways of... Like, loads of different ways to approach it, right? And I think we've seen various attempts throughout the last month at, you know, cracking the code of uh, what makes Jean good, how can you, like, optimize the timing, and we've noticed even today different players having different ideas. Oh, when do you move out to the boar? Which boar do you go to first? How much do you invest in knights? When do you have the TC, right? And with all these unknowns, with all these variables, it can be very confusing. Um, as a player, like, how do you counteract what your opponent is doing if you don't know exactly what they're doing? So I think Lucifron going for this early military school you know, maybe has a plan here. But again, these spearmen, if you go and attack with them, if they die, it's experience, right? That's always got to be in the back of your mind when you're play playing against Sean. So we're going to have to see how Lucifron can adapt his build to this, you know, maybe on against a different Civ. It's really clear what you're supposed to do. Make a lot of spearmen, control the middle, right? Build a dock, have fun, right? Maybe not so clear here. No, I think this is just going to be passive spear production into defense, and he's going to go feudal as fast as possible here. Beastie, of course, getting there much quicker because he didn't spend resources on a military school. He's about to start that tech up. We'll have to see if it's going to be the slow tech up. Typically, if you just want to have Jean immediately into her warrior form, you only send Jean. We have seen some variants where some players will send a second villager. That way, you can start walking Jean off towards the boar, and she'll level up by the time she reaches it. Yeah, and we've seen different even approaches to building the landmark. Some players build with four villagers, one of them being Jean, and others like to build with only one villager, only Jean, right? And I think 
that in and of itself just generates such radically different timings <laughs> with like your feudal age age up like how much better is it how much faster is it how much more potent is the knight how many knights do you invest in right like all these sorts of questions and it's really interesting um lucifer i'm gonna scout out that it's kind of coming up slowly this this landmark <laughs> but by the way what is that boar to the south of john's base that is how you survive <laughs> the Jean apocalypse, right? <laughs> you just hide away in your little grove. You can't find me. I think oh, it's I on think the map there, though. Yeah, Yeah, because the patrol area, I think it just came in range. So it looks like Beastie will be able to find his boar. Otherwise, he would have only been getting that 25 XP. Um, the boar has already been heavily nerfed. I had mixed feelings. I think like the thing that I would have nerfed with Jean on the guy XP is the RNG of the wolves. But um, they are still 12 XP. Boars used to be 50, now down to 25. So here's the spearman being aggressive here, trying to idle the gold. It looks like BC's already gotten enough for wheelbarrow and that first knight, so he might be kind of content. As we've seen in the past, French players sometimes only make one knight and then move off the gold for a bit, going into archers or second TC. But we'll see what Jean Dark does here for Beastie. Yeah, this feels like a sustained night push attempt right like i mean it could just be he wants to get the eco upgrades alongside it but like yeah, usually when you upgrade. keep four out like this the cool thing as well is like even if he has to peel away i think what he's trying to do is at least wait for wheelbarrow so he's at least got some gold to work with and then he's efficient in walking away because it is quite a walk back to that tc it's funny lucifron's screen probably hasn't moved either that entire time <laughs> he's just also looking at this one thing like <laughs> I mean, there's nothing watching. else to really check right now, yeah, right? Like, quickly check the, the TC. Spirit. Q villagers, keep watching them. I mean, he's I mean, two now, so it starts up. to get really, really dangerous for him. So he is going to have to pull away in the end before the wheelbarrow is complete. Enough for two knights. Or an upgrade in a knight. And he's going to get those knights. Just an opportunity to potentially raid. Lucifer on the other side of this. Has he... Yeah, he's toggled over. So he's got free spim and immediately goes into the Sapahi toggling. And he's going to be looking for that second military school stat here. Yep, quite strong already. In, he even used the berries already on the minaret, right? He really forced those down, so he had a lot of food. Mm. Interesting. How many sheep has he got? Like That doesn't look like a lot at this stage, right? I think, did Beastie get more? Because we didn't do much of a sheep count this game, so... Oh, he's got more on the way home. He's just been holding them. So plenty to work with. 12 for him. That means Beastie must have got a lot less. Yeah, down to 7 already. Mm-hmm. Oof, That's not going to be a ball play. On the south, yeah. So he did spot this Pumba. Not able to hide from the likes of Jean. She hunts him down. It's actually beat. such a nice position as well because you can wall this can off. Wall it. Yeah. yeah. I think you only need one small wall there as well. So if you're ever at risk, easily protected. All right, and Jean's out of here. Job done, she says. <laughs> March is done. Double school already. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, school, double school already for Lucifron. Outpost going up on the gold as well. Some spearmen to defend against this early knight. So not much aggression going to happen from Beastie, who has gotten two knights, and he's now going for upgrades. I don't know if we'll see a third knight, as we do see the ranges coming in. Beastie also hasn't consecrated the uh, stable. He consecrated the TC. Oh, which outpost. Kind of indicates... Not going up quick enough there. Unfortunately, it's wrapped on. Spearmen are going to push him away in time, though. Jean is not here yet, so you couldn't contest this. Looks like he will be able to protect that goal. Now, th this does start to look more and more like that Castle Age build. You just get the Spearmen passively producing. You set up an outpost on the gold, so you're always protected. The problem with this build that BC is going to experience is that the, the pace at which he gets into archers is kind of slow in terms of what you need to slow down or stop, rather, the Ottoman Fast Castle. Yeah, we'll see. Dare I say the Ottoman FI? Probably. Get out. <laughs> Probably not. Well, second board going <laughs> to Jean hey, as well. You know what? If he builds a second outpost, it's fast Imperial. How about that? It's probably not fast Imperial. Nah, not, it's not going to be fast not Imperial. Here. It's a strong build, but I don't think, I don't think so, you risk it against Jean Dark here. So funny thought, by the way. Uh, last time we saw this in this tournament, which was between Marine Lord and Mister, this specific matchup on this specific map, where the Ottomans really did just completely stomp Jean to dust. That was with the old Boar XP, if I'm not mistaken. So the 50 XP instead of 25. So this is kind of even more oppressive than the previous version. Love this out of Beastie. With Jean nearby, the build aura speed, this outpost is going to go up fast. So it's going to force a reaction, which is exactly what Lucifron doesn't want to have to do. Brace comes out the spears. 
A nice cleave follow up there by Beastie, getting those spin oh, and low. The heal. Beautifully it's done. The Divine Restoration. Line. I mean, that's max value as well, by the way. It's missing HP, so you want to use it when they're as low as possible. Yeah. I think that was even off cooldown. I think Sean has only been up since, like, what, like five minutes ish? Spahi, though, onto the gold. So there's any gold you can raid, I can raid better. No one's here to defend. But this is a big deal. He's got the stone as well. BC has prep for this. So it's going to be arrow slits onto that goal. But unfortunately, this spawn might be good enough for Lucifer. And he has got a back spawn gold there that he can quickly retreat to if need be. He will need to. As... Oh, oh, not paying attention. Ah. It's tricky That's... to pay attention to that the entire game, you know. That's true. Just... Does Lucifer not know about that board? I guess he must not. Otherwise, he would be torturing that there's, wall. There's right? a wall up. That, like, it would take this one Sapahi, right? Like, it's better to just try and idle his gold to stop him scaling more knights, I think. The dive in again. Still only the one Vil kill. Probably unlikely to see more, as Lucifer is just probably watching that part of the map the most right now. Yeah, and I think Lucifer, like, you know, he's been sensible to spears here, right? He's even going into the undermesh. He knows the archers are coming. A little bit surprised he didn't go for Steeled Arrow as a priority here, considering that you've got your Outpost, you've got your TC, and your opponent's trying to dive you. But I guess against Jean, it can feel a bit weirder, and that, you know, if they get away, she'll always heal the units up. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised that BC's going for the Stone Outpost here. He wants to move in. I think he's thinking he might need to evacuate this area soon. Oh, well, it lets him move off, right? Because now yeah, he, he can leave, guard right? the other gold, and you can't break that outpost without a ram, which Lucifer would have to then waste more gold on Siege Engineering, but he doesn't have a choice anymore. Like, his eco is a bit skewed, right? You're seeing that amount of wood he's holding on to, 600 now? Nothing to spend it on. Yeah, I wonder what his game plan is. Could maybe drop down, like, a range or two here and just also add archers? Ottomans, you know, used to always add archers, but if the plan was to FC, it's definitely not the plan anymore. Oh, Definitely man. wouldn't be a fast one. This is tough. <laughs> I actually think Beastie's solving it. <laughs> a slow castle. Ooh, the Spahi catching out. Oh, but in the meantime, oh, the, the villagers. Charge. And they're getting trapped. They're completely trapped. Four dead. Oh my gosh, a four vil lead. <gasps> a five vil And lead. the Spahi? Don't mind if I do. Loses one knight for it, but that's a lot of XP farmer for Beastie. A lot of pressure maintained. Lucifer, I, honestly, I think he looks a bit lost now. Like 800 wood in reserve. Because it's the only thing you can get. Like, what is your play here? He's trying to rush onto the goal, but look at his food. It's not like this is ever going to be a castle age play. He needs to get no some he production together. It's just the twin minaret. And <laughs> Meanwhile, his food nearby is being taken by Beastie. Those two yeah. villagers didn't want to walk all the way home. Oh, man. Dude, what a cool game. Like, I was a little bit worried that this was going to be kind of a wipe for the Ottomans, but Beastie, clearly been watching this matchup, done his research, and... This is an incredibly strong position. Like, Lucifer would have to mount quite the miraculous comeback. Yeah, and he's just going to give up this tower now. Beastie probably should know about the gold in the back, but he might not at this stage. I, I feel like he does. Yeah, he knows. Um, it's just a matter so of how do you punish it? I, I think around here seems farming. so risky. Oh, this seems so risky. No, I, I don't think it's you, like, go... Spears. Yeah, I don't think you dive this. I, I think you just keep taking your little free wins everywhere and scale the XP, right? Like, John has got a lot of EXP in this early game. Uh-oh, John's gonna die. This is too far. Maybe get some cleaves. He must have stored them up. Like, what, two, maybe three charges? Yeah, so that could add up. Many units, so. Okay, but it's fine. John's gonna go and hide in her tower. <laughs> could you imagine? Just every other unit runs, and you just leave John there instead. It's gonna be a garrison, so archers are protected from the Sapahi. And Spahi, they just can't stick on Jean. 1.36 wow. movement speed. Just so easy to just drift away from this force. I was thinking with the positioning, and it might have been possible for Lucifer to just get us around there, but it, it kind of made sense he didn't want to risk it. That was a lot of knights, so probably for the best here that he didn't trade everything away. Also, you know, just trading your whole army against Jean might not be smart um, in general. But so, these yeah. are free. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, but <laughs> she still gets experience. Mm -hmm. And Beastie, by the way, is going to go Castle Age first. This has not worked impressive. out for Lucifer on that. More than impressive. I mean, the fact that he's also close on military count, but also army values neck and neck. This is a very harsh, harsh reality check for Lucifer on. Ottomans not working out as intended. Guild Hall now on the way from Jean d'Arc. And these houses, these mining camps, they do give XP. You're seeing that correctly. Anything that has a cost, she can farm. Yep, she's definitely enjoying this. 
more experience for Sean under her belt. Tier 3 can't be too far away. No, I, I, at this stage we're like 12 minutes in, right? It's probably been about 100 Maybe XP or so farms. Yeah. yeah. And now the question is, does Beastie know that she captures sacred sites and gets with the experience if your opponent's camping? I think he does. Like, and if he, he just does. backs away, I think 50 XP, one sacred site, I think she'll be a level 3. And the, the, the upside, at least for Lucifron, he is going to be Castle Age when she's level 3. Downside, almost everything else in this game right now. <laughs> the rest of the situation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. This is... I mean, I don't think it's that bad, though, for Lucifron. Like... No, it's not GG, right? Because this is... The Ottomans... Someone we really emphasized to start this game is this is the ramp up point. This is where that passive production mm -hmm. really starts to add up in these games. Yeah. We'll see though, Jean not heading towards the sacred site, notably. Huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep bringing it up until someone does it, right? Until someone well, makes it, me happy. It's baffling because it's 50 XP for a capture, right? Like it's, it's so much XP when you're level two, especially. It could just not be the focus right now. I think he's scared, yeah. right? Yeah, like, because this yeah. is a lot of military. You knew it was going to come out after you teched up because that's you, like, showing weakness. When you just choose to go Castle Age, what you've said to your opponent is, hey, 1,800 of my resources hasn't gone into fighting. Committing to the raid here is also an extremely bold choice. Let's see how it plays out for him, Cotton. Like, he's going to be going for this dive, but it looks like Lucifron sees it coming, and he's going to retreat with the Vils before he even gets there. Although and then bring more villages out. Bring more villages <laughs> into it. But... And He's just running for the wood line. Yeah, but and the, the army the whole from army. coming home. Exactly. Like, there's practically no one here to defend. Janissaries are going to come out just in time there from Lucifron, so should shove these knights away, which is important, by the way. They are castle age knights. They would have cleaned up on that eco. Issue with this? BC kind of got what he wanted, right? Yeah, he put Lucifron back in the hole. <laughs> Get back in there. I mean, yeah, right. That is accurate. And now we do what see... What do you think you're doing on my map? Man-at-arms. We see some Arbalist potentially coming out from Beastie. We'll see. He's looping again around this I think he got spotted here. I think the problem with what I'm now seeing from Beastie is, like, the Man-at-arms play, which is so meta right now for Jean Dark, does it not feel like it gets countered by the Ottomans with, like, Janissary spam? She's on a sacred site. Someone did it. That's all you care about right now. It's happening. Finally. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, it's not all I care about, but to say I don't care. No, no, no. I care. <laughs> Winston's care about one thing. For good reason. That should be level three the moment that's captured. I'm so Let's happy. See. Oh. 50. Bang. Is he still not there? Dude, he must be like a sliver away at this stage. There's no way it's, we're more than like a minute of passive XP out. But the fights he took early on, usually passive no fights, John is like, what, 20 minutes? I think so. Something like that. Depends on the board, depends on the wolves, depends on any combat. I feel like we didn't see him kill any wolves. Maybe one max, and maybe he missed out big sure. time there. Look at that. All the tray being upgraded, they're being prepped. Yeah, but the first Mangonel's already out. Sean just leveled Spahi. up. Spahi, Beastie backs away. Just in time. Wait, I thought I did. Oh no, she she played consecrate. Played consecrate. No. There oh, we there go. Oh, she leveled there up. Is. Boom. So there we go. So we were right just less than a minute away after that sacred site. And now, now Beastie's gonna want to fight. This is a very big boost to your power levels. I think it's 15 extra damage on the cleave. You've now got the Jean's champions out, which hit like trucks, as you can see there. As you can see he's confidently moving forward. I love how these knights have just been dancing around that left side of the map. They never fully, fully commit. They're they're just making sure they're keeping Lucifron super honest. Like, if you leave this alone, I'm gonna run in. And here he is again. Maybe a mill kill here. Nice. Maybe two. Looks like he he's might even dive here. Could he escape wait, on the side wait. here? No, I think the tree's still up. He's gonna get pinched by the villagers. Lucifron says, where the hell do you think you're going? Janissary is also going to cut off the retreat here, so probably two more knights going down, which would be all of them. One gets away, to tell the tale. Yeah, but now you don't invest into knights. You invest instead into man-at-arms and, 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 and archers and springholds, and you counter this entire army. This entire army is countered by... Do, do you feel that way? Like, Do you not feel that Janissary has just destroyed the men-at-arms? 
They'll do okay, but it's not a, it's not the best, right? And you have archers to just snipe the the Jans, right? That's fair. In um, fairness, yeah, BC two does have a lot of them. Do okay with enough time, right? Like, I think it's going to come down to that. Like the siege is obviously the decider. If the Manganel mm -hmm. does live long enough to just get one, if not two, good archer shots out, then BC can't fight. But BC is too if, small. It's like, I think it'll be that's okay. what I'm about to say. Yeah, if he gets the spring shot out, like if the position is right, that's the key detail here. Like position is everything. It is, and you can see the desperation for food from Lucifer. He's like, "Oh, finally, I can just go grab this uh, this deer pack." Yeah, but, but what's he doing with that food? It, wait, is this imp? Imp? Is this fast imperial? <laughs> nah, he doesn't have the gold. No, no, don't sell yourself short, Winston. You might have called it. it He's got gold on the back. Fast, that's another S S I. Slow imperial. It would be fast to go now, right? Like. It's interesting. Say it's a we just like saying fast a lot. Villagers fast fighting against the night is an interesting choice. It's actually going to be a second TC by Lucifron here. Interesting. Meanwhile, the fast sacred side of victory approaching. So we'll see if this works out. The Manganel has been revealed, but BC obviously has known about that because, you know, Ottoman sick castle, you tend to know. Uh, consecrated upgrade coming in. Oh boy, this fight's pretty big, and I don't know if BC has the numbers. It says 51 to 57, but. Man, the army value there for uh, Lucifron is much, much higher. Much higher. It's a scary one. This TC also is just annoying extra defense. Depends on how much you with. value Sean here, right? In the counter oh, units. Yeah. Some, right? oh, like, I, it, well, it, I was on Reddit the other day, Winston. Sean's OP. So, I mean, like, do, do we not just add 100 military pop to Beastie's army? 100? Oh, sorry, sorry. 80. She's level 3. Okay. I have to see. That's a lot of spears. <laughs> Dancing with the double mango is very risky. The springholds though Wait. are there in position, and you can see. Look at the damage they deal to on the jam. <laughs> it's so high. Well, here's another scary thought hunt. though. So, so here's another scary thought though. Like Janissaries get bonus damage against cavalry, right? But you reduce range damage. Does that not even it out? But you it kind of range does, damage? right? What? Yeah, because so because you lose fifty percent range damage against Jean, but. The like Jannies get bonus damage against shot. Like, that's not bad mm. damage from that many. I mean, it's not the absolute counter, but I'm thinking compared to other range units at this stage of the game, Janissaries are a decent solution. Let's see if you can find it. Spring ult. Interesting ults. that Beastie feels he needs to fight here. He's really going to force the issue. Jannies, they get a, low, a lot of damage there into Sean. Mangoes. This is the awkward thing, right? They can stay out of range of Springles and hit the melee. That's a big wallop. Beastie, I think he's holding on to the, the Divine Restoration here. It should be off cooldown. Just doesn't want to pop it yet. Meta, just saying kill me. Like, what is that position? Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh wow, that's a big loss. That aura this being gone. Is, this is such an elaborate dance, and now the Manganel for Beastie is here as well. He's just going to go force down this TC, and Lucifer just moved out to this. And BC's like, nope, nope, you, you don't get to have this. That could be some uh, villagers just insta dead. It's going to force the fire down. She's moving in now. Divine heal. Restoration! But she gets low. She instantly has to peel back here. If they get close enough for another wave, there it is. Sean is down. Now he wants to fight. Mangoes hitting that warp. That's going to force the flood through the melee here. Beastie needs to back Ooh. up fast. His Mango also about to fall in the Janissaries. Look like they might win the day. Beastie, without Jean here to assist, has to leave. And the TC could be saved. Ooh, big mango shot though under the Jans on the retreat. Oh, he Another shot comes in. Janis, they're gone. The Janissaries are down. It's all the melee move. right now. Arch is backing away. Yeah. Jean has been brought back. She's on the way right now and she's going to cause some havoc. What an incredible fight there for Lucifron, though. Like, initially, it was so good. And now, on the retreat here, it looks like BC got a bit more value Not out enough, of his though. army. But just the, the thing that I'm noticing here is free mango still alive for Lucifron. That's a very big deal in this game. On the flip side, Beastie benefits from the fact that Lucifron was not quick enough on the ungarrison. He did not save the town center from dying. Jean, however, where is she? Need, oh, she's in wait, the mix. She ran around the back like the cleave. You need to be careful. The Janissaries might snipe her out the sector. If he used the mango right now, instead though, the panic run away. One siege goes down. Another 60 XP. The greed of Beastie knows no bounds as he manages to stay in range. And somehow, Jean lives on the tail end of this fight. 
Another. Oh my gosh, it's starting is to this work. It? It's starting I to think work. This is it. I think that is it. He gets all three siege weapons. Lucifron has no standing army. 29 units to eight. Where did his army go? It's dead. The retreat was so expensive. Now, oh the Red my. Palace on the south here to secure both the Sacred Site and push him off those berries. The Sacred Site's only five minutes left. I didn't really think that that would, like, end up factoring into the pacing of this game. But Lucifer, adding a TC, are you sure you need a TC right now and not more army? Dude, you know what the crazy part about this as well is, like, you know, a lot, lot of this is going to be on John, but, like, can we just give enough credit to the Guild Hall? We never saw what it was on, but when I see him going Imperial like this, yeah, it's because he was hoarding the food there. That yeah, guild all definitely came in clutch to allow for this. We might be able to see it on the timeline at the end of the game, right? We'll be able to see yeah. a spike. And man, he's getting the increased damage. So, the John's champions, he can even pump a few of them out of the red pass. It, just it seems nitpicky, close. but when the armies are so small, just one keep pumping out those champions is actually a big deal. What I'm worried about is Sean hitting tier 4 almost soon it's got to be soon right so there's so much like the, the mangoes alone the mangoes alone give so much xp halfway, halfway there okay I'm, I'm, i was wrong okay i thought it was a bit closer it's Thank a lot you, of xp Vodka, yeah. for showing us that um, it's not part of the caster mode but you can see there halfway to tier four i think the game might be over before we get tier four four and a half minutes yeah we'll see how this next fight goes it's the the army lead has been brought back a bit by lucifron he's He's got a couple more Jans out, but I'm not sure Janissaries are going to be the answer for him here. I mean, for Jean, more buildings there's a now. Mango still, right? And it's like, he doesn't have any Spring ults. He has six Sabahi, so it's not like he's going to be able to, to punish them. Looks like Lucifron did build another TC after losing that front one. But this is still him in recovery mode. Meanwhile, Beastie, four minutes away from a victory. And the problem now is this Red Palace makes it almost impossible for him to decap south. So Beastie knows he's going to get a fight up here. And he has, oh god, he's got a cannon emplacement coming. All right, good luck, I'm folks. Go next game. That, that, that's, no, cannon emplacement in the outpost right there on the screen. Click oh, it. Oh, wow, 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 <laughs> wow, 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 wow. The Manganel, I'm not going to have a great time with that. Oh, Jesus. Beastie needs cannon emplacements. I mean, they are ridiculously strong, and this is going to show why. I mean, one man goes where you've got, he'll have enough time to fortify this outpost as well, unless Lucifer dives on it, and if he does, you're going to be stacking for cannonballs. Okay, That'll be enough to win the strong. fight. Was that a Rebolda Queen for a second? <laughs> it's like, whoa, no, no, no. Misclick, guys. We don't build those. And finally, we see Knights in queue again for Beastie. Now that the Jan, count, Jan stuff is done, and he has... The Jan count is down a bit more than it was before, and he's back to a more stable economy with more food income. We do see Knights in queue once again. The... Arbalist Mass, 44 Spearmen for Beastie, so not going to be the best matchup against <laughs> that's a cheeky tower. Uh, the best <laughs> matchup you against imagine? Jans, but it'll work. Could you just imagine if you got a cannon emplacement on that, on all the wood? That would have been the Insta GG <laughs> moment. I mean, we we'll might see. be three minutes away now. I'm seeing elite army tactics coming in. That's going to make it almost impossible for Lucifer to fight. That actually just might be the, the detail that wins this. I mean, Beastie literally is just spamming spears because they will win against everything there. Yeah, until you have a big enough ranged mass. I mean, maybe Manganels with enough of them, but only two. And the cannon the shoots it's just victim. <laughs> what was that about guns? <laughs> oh man, Mine's really bigger. Cool. <laughs> Oh no. And he's going to try to stack on it. It's got the torch armor, it's got the extra health. You can't kill it, which means you have to fight under it. He's going to try to rush a keep up here. Mango oh. immediately gets oh. a big hit. Danny's. Oh. They're done. They're out. They're down. And so is Lucifron. Castle is not going to go up here. Mango targets it and move in. Beastie takes wow. game five. He makes it look so simple. But trust me, John, it's not that easy. Not like this. That's just Beastie. That was impressive. That was so, so cool to watch. I, I mean... Gotta give credit to Lucifer on there. He tried some stuff, but that FC, like if he was attempting or aiming for some sort of FC, it definitely didn't pan out there. Uh, the castle timing was even slightly better for Beastie, right? So just not quite able to do it. The raids were really punishing. There was that one raid made feudal, I think, which took four. Um, can we see the uh, food count on this timeline? Yeah, I, I want to see that big. Let's spike. see. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> What? How much food was he? Wait, so like, I guess, 
Oh, he immediately. Yeah, you, it must. He must have immediately done it. And so this takes an average. So it kind of averages. Oh, on the graph. Got you. So the spike kind of got cut off because he clicked it and immediately placed the red palace. So that that spike gets a little a little ruined there. Sad we can't see it in all of its glory. But that went well above two thousand, right? Uh, because he was able to click up to imp, right? So that must have been yeah. double the graphite, at least. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. That, this dude. This, I mean, honestly, like I know we're gonna get inclined to say, "Oh, Jean, Jean, very OP." But like Jean, now I think because that game is like fifty percent, maybe fifty-two percent in this tournament. That yeah. was Beastie playing really well. Like that matchup, yeah, we've seen it go completely the other way between Marino and Mister. Mm -hmm. That was just a great read and a great evolution of how Jean plays Himayama against Ottomans. So it was. It was honestly a, a really fun game to watch, but looking forward, we are back to Gorge. Gorge has, I think, for me, become my favorite map, um, maybe outside of Arabia, right? Yes. I think it's my second favorite map because I always have to give credit to, to where it's due. But yeah, Malians and Roos, another, like, this is kind of a classic matchup, right? This is a, a matchup we saw a lot, and even, you know, back to Call at Arms, the past year of competitive AOE4 has seen this matchup a lot, so... Between these two, I'm sure they're very comfortable with what to expect, what to see. So we're kind of moving away from the new sieves uh, in this one, but still pretty exciting, right? The Malians have been have seemed dominant, but Beastie let or sorry, uh, Lucifron let Beastie get Roos here. So I'm curious about what his plan is. Yeah. So this, I mean, this is like the two strongest sieves before the expansion, right? Mm -hmm. Clashing. Um. Could we be looking at a wooden fortress play? There's no way. It's popular against Malians, right? You block out their gold. I could kind of mm -hmm. see it. I'll have to see if it comes out. Just looking at the matchup of these players. I mean, we talked about this before. Micro and macro basically reversed. Attack and defense more or less reversed. The aggressiveness kind of speaks for itself. Should be an interesting matchup. Oh, wow. I mean, I think this series could easily go seven games at this pace from what we're seeing. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I would... <laughs> You know, do you think do you think the adjudicator of this has to go after that game where Lucifron built a dock behind Beastie's base? Do you think it's got to be like maybe that's a nine on creativity? You think so or no? Hmm. I think yeah. I think that game alone was a ten on creativity. Like I haven't seen that a Japanese really player cool. do that yet. That so. was really creative. Yeah, I really like that. Um, didn't work, but it was cool. <laughs> so it's yeah. I think like that's the thing as well that. Whenever we get an expansion or a big patch, we highlight the start of the series. Like Lucifron, it's not day, in fact. Lucifron and Vortex are some of the most creative players because they just play so many evolutions. They usually play the first 10, 15 minutes, which means you see very different styles of play. I think they proved that uh, in Golden League 2, right? Where they were dominating that tournament because it was these different formats, like 12 villager starts, that they got more practice in, I'd say, than any other players just because they're regularly scrimming with each other. So. Definitely scary from that creative angle for sure. When we get deeper into the meta evolution is when it's a little bit different. But I think Lucifron especially has been stepping up in the second half this year. We saw that in the Elite Classics, right? Like he looked nigh on unstoppable in that tournament. Um, definitely think like, you know, you look at the first half of the year and you say we're playing vanilla format, people might have favored Beastie in this matchup. But I think this is still like it's a coin toss. I, I have a feeling we could be going to game seven. Unless Beastie is throwing some sort of wild curveball like that Wooden Fortress I mentioned, which would be such a cool, different approach to the Roos opening. Yeah, but he only has a 6 out of 10 on creativity, so probably not. Oh, well, yeah, so, so right, he's right, not going right. to do that, right? Because no one if, Wooden Fortresses. If those stats are dictating real life, then I don't know. But what's, Wait, what's he gonna so... Do? So is Wooden Fortress a, a 10 out of 10 and then... No, no, no. So, so Wooden Fortress is a 6 out of 10, I think. And then Kremlin is a 10 out of 10 on the enemy gold. For creativity? Gold. For creativity on the enemy gold. Oh, on the enemy gold. A forward, the enemy a forward gold. Kremlin maybe be a, a 10. Yeah, I don't think we've seen that work in a long time. Let's see if we Actually, get it. Actually, no, I think I saw it work recently. I mean, it can on a map like Gorge with a spawn like this. We hop into yeah. game number 6. Both players get a forward spawn in gold. Let's go. Beastie with the Roos up against Lucifron playing as the Malians here. And Lucifron straight away pumps that second scout to try and take the deer away. Beastie, meanwhile, going wide, but he goes the side that the first scout of Lucifron headed towards. So it'll be very hard to take the sheep away. Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see. Let's see. 
So the big thing, obviously, in this matchup going to be, you know, the hunt the hunt war. We're going to see if Beastie can get enough bounty to, you know, have his comfortable tier 2. That's usually what you're looking for. Gorge is in a map where you have particularly more hunt or anything like that. So it's not going to be, you know, super spicy for Roost here. But a big part of it is going to be that your Blackwood line is going to be really secure. And the idea is that Roost can handle that quite well. But yeah, Malians with the forward gold and stone could be tricky. It's generally forward on this map, right? You can have golds that spawn on the side, I believe, on this map. Yeah, you can. You can, but it's not super common. I think generally it's more forward. Hmm. Yeah, I think, like, the, the tree line kind of screwed a bit. I've seen this sometimes. It's very rare, but sometimes one player gets that, like, split tree line in the center. The other one gets it off to the side. Yeah. Um, I'll have to see if it comes into play. The cool thing about going for a wooden fortress play as well is you have more scouts, so you can contest any, like, scout blocks. And then on top of that, you can have scouts to garrison a wooden fortress. But it is tough. Like, if you're going to make that play, I think you're already researching Wheelbarrow and Beastie isn't. So I guess we are just going to get something a little bit more contained out of Beastie. Nothing too wild to open this game. Yeah. And standard stuff from Lucifer here. Although, yeah, the second scout never feels good. It feels like it's more mandatory against Bruce than it is fun. But Mullins, of course, are always going to be kind of content with it more than any other sim because that upgrade is so available and... It makes their scouts so much more effective at raiding and a lot of other elements. Um, but yeah, let's see. Looks like a decent number of wolves going to go to Beastie as well. So Bounty can't be too bad here. Wheelbarrow coming in. Looks like it's going to be a Kremlin somewhere. Did someone say LAN? Sorry, my mind is focused on, on an EGC LAN maybe one day. I one think... Day. Is he going to be just shy? No, no, he got the two wolves. Okay, so he's going to get enough. I was so worried for a set there. Like, you just have to cancel Wheelbarrow, which is just not feel good. Mm -hmm. Looks like he should be fine. Last thing you want to be doing is the Roost is going on to gold, right? Like, until you're in Fulage, it's just not something you want to do. Has a good position for a Kremlin here, by the way, between the gold yeah. and the stone that would give him flexibility. Looks well, like he might be leaning towards friend. gold. Yeah, he goes quite safe. He goes very safe. That's interesting. I'm surprised he didn't like... put it a little more forward. To get, Maybe like, he's on. looking for the berries to be safe here, right? Because like, if you're playing onto deer and you come out to the mid map and it's like javelins that you're facing off against plus Donzo, you could be pushed away. So. This is like prof scouts. No, you don't do prof scouts against Malians. The warrior scouts run you down, right? Hmm. Yes, and you don't want to do pro scouts the other way because, like, honestly, Fulani and scaling it tends to be better. Yeah. Um, we so could. Interested. There's no way we get Firmba play here, actually. I think, like, Firmba kind of feels rough no. a bit against the Roost because the Kremlin's so strong. So probably going to be looking at standard Fulani play. And we well, should know the next few minutes. Like, if he's saving space in the back, then it, it's pretty clear that he's just going to build the, the 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 Golden Corral in, like, a U here. Probably on the right side, maybe. Yeah, like there. It looks like enough space for everything. I kind of like the idea of pushing it left because then, like, if there is some aggro from the Roost player, they either deny your gold or deny your Fulani, right? They can't deny both with a push one side. Um, we'll see, though. It's going to be Stone Gathering, so BC is going to be going with that multi TC play. I think the real question here is whether it's two or three TC. Mm -hmm. In this matchup, I think two TC can be pretty good because then you reach Castle usually ahead of the Malians, and then you can try to get these relics. Yeah. A lot of stone coming in. It's a lot on stone for this build. It's interesting. So you're saying he just wants to get it early? Yeah. What, the, the TC? Yeah, like you... Well, not the TC. This... It's, it's interesting, like, uh, macro. Oh, Sorry, got I'm you. I just mean, like, he's got the stone... You mean he's really rushing early. the stone, then going back? Yeah, yeah because, like, yeah, I think the logic here out. is that... Lucifron could just have built a stable, got that cheap Marlin scout upgrade, and then push you off stone, right? No. So, trying to be, yeah, and you can see it's the perfect read because Lucifron is going for the upgrade on the scouts now. And so he's got gets the stone. Yeah, that was great. Okay. I was well, like, yeah, rushing it, like, that's a lot on stone for this to work. And maybe this also makes sense with the Kremlin placement is that his lumber camps are now going to chain the, up, uh, the, the improvement. So, it's another reason to build it further back. Um, rather than protecting the stone. So it's all going to work out. This is like a much greedier version of any sort of build um, in terms of just getting that TC up with minimal investment. Um, so we'll see if this pans out. Obviously being up a vill does not hurt because Malian's built that scout early. BC actually getting a, a house already with his scouts. That's quite some value um, 
just to get from your starting scouts. You'd expect it's maybe the Warriors well. to come back and defend, but I guess they were well, harassing. That's the thing. That's the brilliant read by Beastie. Is like he's like, oh, I see that you actually have your scouts trying to block my TC play. So I know I have numbers, and that's why this isn't going to work either. Can't block him from starting the TC. The Warrior Scout won't be able to hang around here, so Lucifer has to back out. And look at the Northern Scout there. He has to wrap around the Kremlin. This is also difficult because of the range here. If you start diving, BC's going to move to the north side of the TC. Kremlin should be in range. Kremlins yeah, aren't going to be pulled, though. Yeah, Kremlins are here. Maybe Avil goes down, gets the surround even on one of the scouts, <laughs> just to say, hey, why are you here? Uh, and yeah, it gets pushed away. Not even losing a unit yet. Actually, it's 90 there. Um, but yeah, that's... It's interesting here. Yeah, really good micro so far, and looks like he's going to be able to push these scouts further back. Uh, scouts being brought low, but BC able to peel them one by one. And the Gremlins, I think they have about 15 seconds left, which is the perfect amount of time to finish off that TC. So, Lucifron, he is now adding in the ranches. So, this is now going to be 2TC versus Gradual Ranch Spam into Fulani. I imagine we are going to be seeing Castle Age rushed by BC with limited resource investment to units. Maybe just prep one yeah. or two stables but don't build too many units yeah this is this is the roost classic it was even even being done in with the golden gate way back in the day the, the two tcfc um from roost where it's really safe he's he is adding a knight already which probably pretty good to have one or, or two just to have some map presence but um, i would also kind of expect the fc behind this uh, i can't imagine he would need to go for a lot of military It'd be very surprising here. I mean, like, the, the real big play now to stay ahead of the Malian's eco, it's not just your 2TC, right? It's the fact that these relics, if you look at the way they spawned, three of them seem quite grabbable. Um, Lucifrom, now already adding the Donzos, aware of the threat on the horizon. Mm -hmm. One one ranch already filled up, though, for Lucifrom, so the economy might look a little better for Beastie, like, numerically, but income-wise, I think it's ever so slightly in Lucifrom's favor. He has... A full pit mine already, a second full pit mine already on the 8k, and already a ranch. So that's, you know, a couple of bills advantage for him, probably. We are about to see a ramp up in the food income. You saw that the roost up to 800, and also survival techniques hasn't even kicked in yet. So there is going to be a lot more food on the horizon for Beastie. Curious how many knights he wants to invest into here. I think the logic is that you start off with the stables like this, just one of them building knights now, so you don't have to add in I... more stables in, in the interim. There's also... Potentially, he's going to send it back to kill the boar for the vills, or at least make that vill, the vill kill, the boar kill easier. Although it's going to get spotted. Um, yeah, this nice being on spotted the way. might be a problem for Beastie. It goes for the wooden fortress, so really responsible approach to this, understanding that the, the scouts can be annoying. You can try oh. to pull Pumba to get involved, but the knight's here. Beastie can just draw aggro and snipe this out. Yeah, he was going to do this anyway, so it doesn't really bother him. The scouts like, started thanks. it. <laughs> It's like there's going to be a raid in. Donzos are arriving, but these villages don't die too quickly to that small account. Another outpost. And, you know, this, uh, that's a really healthy spot for, uh... Oh, yeah. For mill. a hunting cabin. Yeah, the hunting cabin. It's a lot of gold. Is that looking blacksmith like coming out? really close, but so is Lucifron's FC. That's a blacksmith. Interesting. Yeah. That, that, wait, if you're Lucifron, do you just go for Rimba here? Because, like, yeah, that's not an impressive you... Fulani. We were saying you don't go for Rimba, but maybe with only this many cattle, you do. It feels so bad if you go up with one cattle, right? Like, so you haven't got anything out of the Castle Age. I think, funnily enough, the Spanish bros might be onto something, right? We already saw one for Rimba today from Vortex. We're about to see another from Lucifron. Beastie, by the way, I don't think he scouted this. Yeah, Knight tries to get in the back, but the scouts are nowhere near this, so... Beastie, maybe he suspects it's a Farimba play. Probably with the tech timing, he's going to read it for what it is without seeing it. But he isn't in position to confirm it yet. The scout should spot it quite soon. It looks like he's going to go try and raid the wood line, which will put him right in position to see the Farimba going up. But, oh boy. This is... Yeah, he's going to spot it. Nice. But what's your reaction here if you're Beastie? You just have to... Are you everything to click? Or do you make more units? Like... Are you even scared of a Farimba just yet? Like, your position is so secure. Like, you still need Siege to deal with Beastie's defense, Whoops. right? That's it. Yeah, you, you need time, right? Like, Farimba... There's wooden fortresses everywhere. 
Furma needs like a minute or two, right? And you've got that TC at the front to try and defend. You've got Kremlin behind that. You can summon Gremlins if he tries for an early aggro play. It's... I don't think it's as cut and dry as it used to be with the Furma plays. High Trade House is now on the way. It's going to be put at the backward line, which means a decent amount of gold. Nothing too crazy. And then I imagine we're going to be rushing into a Monastery after that, considering the amount of wood Beast he's holding. I'm just getting some value from these Knights still on the north, so... Even with the Ferimba already like out on the map, it's it's built in a place of defense at the start of, of Castle Age here for Lucifer. He's gonna have to shore up his his economy before he can do anything like hyper aggressive. And behind this beast, he's just gonna be going up to Castle Age, transitioning into Horsemen. Interestingly, maybe just didn't have gold for a click just yet for knights. I find that interesting. Um, maybe he wants to just secure. Relics it's cheaply? I'm not sure. I think it lets him play wider, faster, and also, like, you know your opponent's probably going Javelins, because it doesn't just want to be one-trick Donzoing. Um, so, maybe it just gives you a little bit more mass to get around the side there. Meanwhile, Lucifron has to go straight down the center. High Trade House about to complete. Upgrades are coming in for Lucifron, so Javelins ready to party. The six tower range, they could start sniping Eco, but you can see BC already pulls everything back from the 4TC onto the berries. So what I liked about this opening is he secured the, the dangerous resource first, keeps the berries the safe thing for later. Mm -hmm. And he's still getting value from his knights on the north. Yeah, they're being ignored, which is kind of surprising, but I, I think Lucifer has the right read here. Like, he can't wait. He has to do damage, and he needs it now. <laughs> damage now, he says. And do we see a monastery going down in the back there? No, that's a blacksmith now for Beastie. So yeah. still no relic capturing from either player. Well, he, he so needs the blacksmith be rush here because Lucifer's about to get the level two ranged armor upgrade. So it's possible at that stage that even against the, the Kremlin with the, the castle turrets and everything else, he can start to dive with these chunky javelins. And we'll see how that pans out. Like, diving the Kremlin never feels good. Even early castle age with upgrades, it's... It's not ideal, but yeah, he is getting that upgrade for the arrows to defend and vet archer. So that's going to be the the plan here for Beastie. He's probably not too content with the value from that TC. It's given him a go. decent villager lead, but is that like enough you were expecting? Like now your scaling is cut off. Oh, nice find there. Blocks yeah. the relic grabbing. I, I think let, let's talk about that. It's 17. 18 eco lead, right? Like, I think 18 eco lead, if this was against Fulani, no, that TC did pay off. But this is against a Ferimba, right? And one thing that's scary about Ferimba play on this map is that Gorge has very wide spawns of gold. So Lucifer's oh, no. going to have to start playing loose with his economy. Knights might start raiding him there. So it's very yeah. important that Lucifer starts to find some damage into the economy in the next few minutes before he reaches that phase. Like this? That would be good. That would oh, actually be a good shot. Oh, no. <laughs> He really almost gets pinched time. there. That There's wasn't even all the charges, by the way. Beastie, I think he still has about four charges left. I'm not sure. That's yeah. it. Actually, like that, that he didn't panic pump everything, because now you know that Lucifer's going to do this again. And when he does, you're going to have more gremlins to tank for you. Wow. I mean, even Trey, he's just fighting into the gremlins, which is maybe an interesting decision, maybe forgetting that they get a lot of stats at the start of Castle Age, so that was a pretty good trade for Beastie there, but the military count, the Ferimba, starting to kick in 27 Donsos on the field. That is a lot. How do you deal with that if you're Beastie? You're trying to get archers out. You have six crossbows. You have three archers. This is not enough units. Going to be relying on this defense here. Again. There we go. Six come out, and they immediately find the low HP units. They're going to get on the Javelins. Perfect target for them. is yeah, a lot more tanky good. here. Once they're gone, the crossbows archers can start to clear this up. So Lucifron, he gets tricked again. This dive a lot more expensive than the last. And now the knights are still finding targets in the Marlin economy. The charge comes in on the gold line. Donzo will be able to defend it. But he can't help but start to feel Lucifron now losing that full force. It might just be total time for him. Oh, he almost sees that, that monk <laughs> as well. That would have been insane if he caught another Imam on the way back. Um... Yeah, no, that, that, that little choke point, it's the only spot where the gremlins spawn, you know? It's like, it's kind of fortunate for Beastie, but I guess also, that's how he, oh my god, that what? value. What? That's the move for the gold we were talking about, the critical point in the game. Beastie spots him out, now he has only one option left, Lucifer has to go Holy. north, but check Beastie's night count. How many did you see there? Five? He has ten. Where are the other five right now? They should start moving to the left flank now. 
And that's when this game starts to get uncomfortable for the Malians. He's going to find another monk. Don't mind if I do. This is starting to get ugly. And keep in mind, monks detract from the, the Farimba. Like, you need oh, yeah. the Farimba to run. And, you know, there's one batch of uh, Donzos is about to pop out. And then it's going to be Ike. Wait. Ugly. Wait, what? BC's still here. He's on the wood. Yeah, he Lose the front. Come back. <laughs> there was a, well, there was a point earlier where Beastie was migrating those vills to the safety of the town, but that's exactly when he caught um, the opponent. That's when he caught Lucifer on like, the uh, the gremlin spawn. And so Beastie quickly right turned now. around. Wow, he's getting those monks. He's on Knights. the wood line. More vills go down. and Oh my god, he's going to get in. He's found the gold. There's no one here to protect. Lucifer on. This might be it. He's going in for a oh, GG type fight. dive. Gremlins could be spawned. They're AFK right now. There's I, I think he's just dead. Archers. Is this over? This this it looks over. over. The villagers are just gone. Army's dead as well. BC looks like he's going to close it out in six. Incredible game here from BC. Really showing the power of Roos. And the villagers on the gold mine, they have no hero. Lucifron looks over, calls the GG. Oh my gosh, KP. We have another finalist. We do, and it's not going to be a Spanish showdown. No, it's going to be Lucifron begging Vortex to get some revenge. Beastie, so clean and calculated in this sixth game, shows you the Roos are still the top dog, and he is still a top contender. Your second finalist for the final tournament of 2023. It's going to be Beastie versus Vortex.